going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 154 of Heavy Metallurgy. Hope you're having a good Friday. You had a good week. I'm Marty. My co-host here, the, the, the lovely and talented uh, Professor Steele. Alan, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Sorry if we got an echo for a second. My uh, screen just freaked out on me, but oh, uh, we'll get it no fixed. No echo. Appear, everything appears to be good. Okay. But no, I'm doing okay. Just another busy week, but that means it's another fun Friday night that I've been looking forward to hanging out and uh, having fun chatting with folks about heavy metal stuff. And hello to everybody in the chat, whom we will also be chatting with. Hope all of you have had a good week. Uh, a lot of folks seem excited about tonight's topic, but also some folks uh, mentioning that they don't know a lot about this band. So it'll be a good chance for folks to maybe check out some stuff they're not that familiar with. But before we get into any of that, uh, do we have any announcements tonight, Marty? Um, we have t-shirts available, link in the description if you need one of those. If you ordered one a couple weeks ago, I'm a bit behind on printing. I print to order. I don't have them just in a box waiting to be shipped. I'm going to be taking care of them in the next few days. So thank you for your patience. Um, new Panopticon, uh, 10th anniversary for Roads to the North. is Today's a release day. I'm about three quarters of the way through pre-orders, so... If you haven't got your stuff yet, it's coming hopefully next week. And lastly, just a quick thank you. A, um, um, Dave Rao sent me a VCLT. He wanted to thank us for what we do here. And he sent a, a Hemland CD. I don't know what that is. I can't read it. And a Witchcross CD. Oh, that's a really good album. Yep. Fit for fight. He heard uh, us talk about it a bunch on here and knew I didn't have it and thought um, I'd like it. And he was just clearing out. He's replacing CDs with LPs. So, Dave, thank you so much. You're too kind. If you're watching, thank you. Cheers. And yes, we have two guests. Yeah. Before we do that, though, I also have oh. one piece of business. Uh, right last on. week, I mentioned that this oh. big stack of uh, VCLT CDs is going out to somebody for free. We were picking a comment at random from last week's stream. Took care of that right before we went live tonight. And the winner is Mark L. So Mark with a capital L at the end uh, also shows up on YouTube as at Joseph Kiss Senior. So Mark slash Joseph, congratulations. Uh, please get in touch with us. Just leave a comment on one of my videos over on the Let's Talk Metal channel. Uh, let me know that you're the winner. I'll give you an address where you can send me your mailing address. You probably don't want to post it online here. That's fine. But yeah, uh, just leave a comment on one of my videos. We'll get you hooked up and I'll get this stuff mailed out to you well, as soon as I hear from you. So congratulations to Mark for winning the VCLT package. And thanks for the nice comment on last week's video. Really appreciate it. A lot of nice comments on last week's video. Thank you everybody for I know where you were coaxed into commenting, you know, but uh, thank but, uh, you. Yeah, a lot of folks, that video, a lot of folks, I definitely seem to uh, check that one out and uh, uh, enjoyed it. So yep. I'm glad folks got into that topic. We had a really good conversation with Aaron last week. We wandered off topic a few times too, but it was a, a really fun evening. All right. On. Well, we have two reoccurring guests and fellow metallurgists, um, friends of the channel and I'm psyched to be bringing them out. We've got Melanie Loves Death Metal. Welcome back, Mel. Good to see you. <laughs> hey, guys. Glad to be back. I'm glad we're doing this. Hell glad yeah. Glad you guys took my uh, my advice on doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have Jimmy from Future Ruins. Welcome back, Jimmy. Good to see you as always, brother. How have you been? Doing great, guys. The grass is getting greener. Uh, the birds are chirping. It is starting to feel like... That time of year where the snow is gone finally. And I am really stoked for that because I'm fucking tired of the winter at this point. So, right. Yeah. But you're posting stuff again on your Instagram that gives me the EBGBs, all those mountain pics where somebody's clinging to the side of a mountain. <laughs> Not for me. Not for me. Enjoy that. <laughs> Always things like that going on around here, you know, like yep. to keep it uh, kind of uh, a little bit exciting. So, but exciting within reason. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, going to keep doing it. So just being careful as I can and staying within my comfort zone. So right on, uh, what's coming up on your channel? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, May 11th, uh, I've got a big stream coming up for the Maryland death fest. Uh, so me and some of the guys that are going to be going, uh, Jeff 
from uh, Gas Masks, and uh, I think Nick and John from uh, Thralls. Rick, uh, I think, too, isn't he? Urge, Rick. Yeah, I think Rick's going to come on, even though he's not going to make it to the fest, uh, but he's doing the thumbnail for it. And uh, we're also going to have a slew of uh, musicians are going to be joining as well. Um, I'm not sure who's actually confirmed, but I think John from Agalock might be there now that it's cats out of the bag that they're going to be replacing My Dying Bride. And uh, Jeff got a few other uh, musicians kind of lined up. So it's just going to be a big hangout kind of pregame. We're all just going to kind of talk about uh, what we're looking forward to. The bands uh, we're excited for the most. So it should be a lot of fun, uh, May 11th on my channel. And then uh, hopefully uh, it's been kind of quiet once again, but I uh, hope to get a new hiking video by the end of this month. And then uh, once we get through uh, the Death Fest, uh, get back and get into the summer, I'm expecting uh, those hiking videos to start kind of picking up this summer. So, uh, but you know, it always comes down to the timing and uh, just, just being able to, uh, scheduling and things like that weather and just knowing what i'm going to go do so it's always kind of a sort of an uphill battle actually when i'm trying to figure it out because it's just the biggest thing is the scheduling and finding the weekends that i can actually go do it so uh but i do have uh some some big stuff planned as far as those those kind of videos go so uh hope to hope to provide a lot more of that style of content coming up this summer so. awesome melanie how about you you've been busy you've been busy on there what's coming up with you i don't know reviews <laughs> that's about it um i'm not really getting a whole lot of new stuff in so i'm not really doing collection updates all that much um a lot of people have requested me to do like just normal talking videos like where i just talk about things that are like out there i don't know like randomly like things that have occurred like recently this band did this or something like that i don't know i'm trying to figure it out i'm getting, I'm getting a little bit stale content so i'm going to start doing polls of what people want to see on the channel hmm. you've done really good with those in the past just going through things like when uh decibel did their you know top bands yeah. and all that last year you know your commentary videos on those were fun to watch so yeah i can see yeah. why people would want to see uh, more of that kind of stuff for sure yeah i don't want to try to be the trendy youtuber that does those things for views but sometimes they do really well on the channel so i do it just to just for variation mm-hmm yeah, well, if you enjoy it, and yeah, to mix it up here and there, that's fine. Yeah, you you, do, you don't have to comment on every single you know little you know blabbermouth you know, announcement that comes out. Oh my God, this guy just you know grew a beard. Yeah, those kind of things. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, um, we're here for a specific reason tonight, and that's to talk about Bork Nagar. And before we get into how we came about this band, I figured we should maybe. Dig into a little bit of history, thanks to our friends at Wikipedia. So, for those of you who can't read, I'm going to do my best to do so for you. Um, Borknagar was funded by Oystein Brun, then a member of the Norwegian death metal band Molested. When he became tired of the brutal aspects of the band's music, Oystein formed Borknagar to explore a more melodic outlet of expression. Inspired by the burgeoning black metal movement Norway was experiencing and looking to push the boundaries of what was considered traditional black metal music. He wrote all the music and lyrics and gathered together an all-star group of black metal musicians to play in his band, such as Infernus of Gorgoroth, Grim of Immortal and Gorgoroth, uh, Ivar Bjorgsen of Enslaved, uh, when Garm of Ulver Head Control System and Arcturus joined the project. It brought the band immediate attention. The band never even recorded a demo. They simply asked for a, record, a record contract on Malicious Records and were granted the request based on the strength of this lineup. Borknagar's music instantly gained fans and received positive press attention. In 1999, Grimm died. He was replaced by Justin Grievous, who left shortly after to be replaced by Asgir Mickelson. Um, there's a whole bunch more, but you get the you get the general idea. It's a it's a super group, and I think we'll get into that. We'll start with you, Melanie. Where is your first um, connection to Borknagar? Uh, the first album I ever heard was the, not the first one, was it Olden? Kind of blanking already. The, the Olden Domain. Olden Domain. Olden um, and I, that was pretty much my, one of my introductions really into black metal, because it was not really a genre of music that I had ever really listened to. And it was, I was pretty young in high school. Um, and that's because they had just come out with um, Empiricism. Uh that had just come out or was about to come out. And so when people were in the metal scene that I was getting close with, were really hyped about that album. 
So that the olden domain was what really got me into them. Uh, and then when I first heard their self-titled Borknagar album, that I've often said that that's probably like one of my all-time favorite black metal albums. So I was pretty late into the Borknagar uh, fandom, but that's just because I didn't really have much exposure to them uh, when I was growing up. So it's hard to believe they've been around for 30 years. Hard to believe mm-hmm. I bought the first album when it came out <laughs> 30 years ago. <laughs> Tell us about the war, Grandpa. Yeah, yeah. Get on the phone. <laughs> All right, Jimmy, how about you? Yeah, I go back about uh, 23 years, I think, with this band. And uh, my introduction to the band was actually through Dimu Borger, uh, believe it or not. Uh, you know, back in early 2000, 2001, uh, I wasn't really into black metal, and uh, Dimu Borger was one of the you know, sort of gateway bands for me, uh, whether you love them or hate them, I still I still love the band. Uh, you know, obviously they went in a different direction from their sort of black metal roots to a more commercial, you know, uh, easily accessible black metal style. You can argue whether that's really black metal or not, but regardless, uh, I really dug uh, the Spiritual Black Dimensions record. And at the time uh, when I had heard that, uh, there was a song on that album called The Insight and the Catharsis. And on that song, uh, Vortex has some clean vocals, and he was not a member of the band yet. Uh, but that was the, that was my introduction to Vortex, and I just, you've heard that song, I just was floored by his vocals. I loved his clean vocals. And I was like, who is this guy? You know, where is he from? And, uh, you know, go looking down, uh, I mean, in those days, you know, obviously we didn't have Encyclopedia Metallum, but uh, come to find out, he sang in a album called The Archaic Course by Borknagar. And at the time, I was reading Metal Maniacs, and I think uh, <clears throat> I think it was either Jeff Wagner or might have been Zoller that did a whole uh, interview with the band when they dropped Quintessence. It was probably and, uh, Wagner. I don't. I don't it was know. one of them. Yeah. I think it was Wagner. But um, but you know, come to find out, I was looking for this guy Vortex and where I could hear more after hearing that Demo Borger song. And uh, come up with the archaic chorus. He's the lead vocalist on that. So that record was my intro uh, to Bork Nagar. And uh, I've been a fan of the band since. I was, you know, uh, really pleased when I picked that record up. I think I got the CD at uh, the local record store and uh, found that, you know, there was a lot of his clean vocals on that album and really kind of one of the intro albums for him. I mean, I think he had done a couple things before that, but this, I think that album was kind of his intro to the, to the scene largely. Um, and also with uh, with Bork Nagar as the band. So, um, yeah, uh, I mean, the archaic chorus, I mean, I haven't uh, looked back since, and uh, they've stuck with me all these years, for sure. I mean, they've had some uh, some ups and downs, and I'm also the, uh, the lame-o that decided to wear the shirt to the actual Bork Nagar stream, <laughs> so you can flame me now if you like, and I'm probably going to be getting a lot of red buzzer tonight anyway because I have a feeling... <laughs> that I'm going to be a lot more, uh, let's say, kind to some of these records than some of my brethren here and, and fellow metallurgists. So, uh, you know, and I'm interested to see how that's going to shake out. But uh, I think it's going to go well. Uh, we'll see. It'll go just fine. Don't worry. Alan's not that mean. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, Alan, Borknagar. You wore the shirt and you came here through Dimmer Borger. Is this like the future poser channel or something? Oh, boy. Are you wearing pink panties too, bra? Oh, bra, bra. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Alan, what have you been watching lately? <laughs> would, would, would you like a would you like a cradle of filth? Uh, you know, uh, skull cap to go with that, Jimmy. Let, we'll let get you set up with like you know, We'll get you set up with a saliva bandana, maybe a disturbed tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, you know, you got you need a little dummy burger in your life every now and then. I, I like them too. Yeah, I'm not gonna I, lie. I, I can handle a little bit of them. <laughs> First nah, few albums in particular. Just have some fun. But let's see. My history with Borknagar. Actually, I came in. I think at the same point Melanie did with uh, the Olden Domain when that came out. I ended up with it as a promo CD. I don't remember how I got it. I wasn't on a mailing list at the time, so either somebody just sent it to me, threw it in with a trade. Or I might have bought it like in a lot off of eBay. I, I did get some promo CDs, you know, from folks back then on eBay where they'd sell like, you know, three at a time. They were like dirt cheap. So it was a good way to check something out you didn't know much about without having to, you know, pay very much. But yeah, so check them out there on album number two. Kept up with them for several years after that, up to about maybe album five or six. 
And then just they kind of fell off my radar. Um, so didn't keep up with them for a while. Eventually, you know, it was a band I'd check in on from time to time. And, it, you know, would check out a couple albums, but then kind of phase back out. Took me a long time to get back around to ever hearing the self-titled album. That one I've only checked out relatively recently. Um, for whatever reason, I just never came across it in the wild. And it was one that, you know, I just never found when I was, you know, trying to order stuff online, never went looking for it. And it was never conveniently next to something else that was already in the cart. So, but yeah, it's a good band overall, uh, pretty consistent over time, although they've certainly gone through different phases. I like most of their material. So, uh, you know, Jimmy, I'm going to be pretty kind to them also, I think, but, um, for me, they're also a band I don't listen to a ton because they do feel to me like one of those bands that I have to pay a lot of attention to or I'm just not going to get much of an experience. That They can really just go in one ear and out the other as background music. Yeah, So it's kind of the thing where it's like, no, nope, I got to stop what I'm doing, kind of focus on it to get a really you know good experience. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't register very well. Um that said, it's not that they're overly complicated or obtuse or anything. I think they actually do a good job of sort of balancing, you know, black metal elements, atmospheric elements, being relatively progressive without going overboard on it. You know, they never really feel like an overtly prog band, but when you stop and listen to what they're doing, you know, th there is a lot of, you know, neat and kind of intricate things there. They just don't kind of shove it way up in your face. They're still writing incredibly good songs and albums most of the time, rather than just these complex jigsaw puzzles that you're supposed to figure out with a you know, slide rule and a calculator. But yeah, that's my kind of you know, quick history and quick take on Borknagar overall. Marty, what's your history with this band? Um, Well, it spans back to when they started. And um, during this era... 95 96 i was completely enamored with norwegian black metal still out of all the black metal styles it's still my favorite all the a lot of the classics still are in my uh, rotation um one thing that made norway well and sweden too very special was the fact that um the super group was a thing this is kind of like this new phenomenon where all this incredibly small um scene Guys interchanging members, starting new little projects, one or two member bands sprout up. One thing that made Norway special about that is they got, due to the popularity of the genre, they got pretty quick um, exposure. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the, the super groups were just as good as the bands they came from, in my opinion. And a lot of these bands, Borknagar being one of them, is they, they've gone on to stand the test of time. But um, yeah, I heard about this. I read about this band, a fanzine. I got the, I paid whatever I had to pay to get the Malicious Records pressing when it came out. For nobody, it's, if anybody has not seen this, that's that's that. But um, this album blew me away. I mean, I liked all the bands that the members were involved in, but this just seemed a little bit special. And the fact that Oystein's guitar playing, it's just, He's so unique, such a emotive player. He incorporates Norwegian black metal, but adds more of a pagan type of, or a folky kind of uh, spirit to his playing. It's very melodic, mm -hmm. very atypical, um, very emotional. He's a very emotional player, and of the songs he creates within his playing style is quite, has a lot of impact. So, yeah, this, this album completely blew me away, and... It happened right. I, I had been doing worm gear for a year at that point, And then it kind of, I fell into a system where the next, well, one, two, three, four, five albums I got as promos. So I was able to grow with the band as they happened and form opinions based on my initial impact from the self-titled, which as you can tell is favorable. And that will definitely show here in a minute when we start getting into the <laughs> ranking and whatnot, but yeah, that's my my experience with them. Love this band, especially the early stuff. And they're still doing good stuff, as we're about to get into here. But, yeah. Um, is that it? Should we get into this? I think it's time. All right. Jimmy, since you're the one with uh, all of them in hand, why don't you start off the shindig here? 
Yeah, uh, the debut. Uh, this is the Century Media Pressing. I don't remember when I got this. It was some years ago. I think I might have get, gotten it used. Um, you know, because these were kind of hard to find for a while until they repressed this. I think I don't remember Hammerheart. I think did the repressing. But uh, yeah, you know, like uh, Marty said. I mean, right off the bat, uh, there was something special with this band, and I kind of find a similarity to Enslaved, uh, their debut record, in that this is a classic Norwegian black metal album, but oh, yeah. it has a little bit more to it than just straight black metal. You know, the things that we heard from that crowd. I mean, this is 1996, right? I mean, the year I graduated high school, actually. Uh, I didn't know of the album when it came out. I mean, obviously I came in on uh, a later record and it did take me some time being that I wasn't really a, into, like it took me a while to get into more uh, more underground black metal, I guess, you know, if you would call this that or not. But uh, there was obviously something a little bit more that they were to the band. And what's interesting to listen to this is because it's you can hear them kind of trying to figure out exactly what kind of band this is going to be because and it's and, and 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 it's never been repeated as well. I mean, this is really kind of a one and done in terms of the rest of their catalog. I mean, they just they've never sounded this scathing and and just uh, you, you know raw, I guess. But uh, Garm's brilliant on this thing, and uh, we have very few Garm records where he uh, you know he had an amazing, just uh, really uh, just intense vocal style in terms of the black metal vocals and uh love is screaming it's yeah great. we've only got you know three or four records where yeah. he did that before he stopped doing it so we have to kind of uh kind of cherish the moments that he had here and uh kind of uh like marty said a super group for sure i mean ivar from enslaved was in here for a couple of records and uh, i think contributed to first three. the idea and the sound yeah, yeah. the first three mm -hmm. but obviously uh oystein uh, the guitarist i mean everything really kind of comes back to him i think in terms of uh, this record i mean it, it's and as going back to what i was saying it's interesting because you just hear that sort of uh you know they're experimenting with different things they've got the black metal sound in there the raw sound but there's a lot of melodic stuff going on here and there's a lot of variation going on as well i mean almost like you could even criticize it and say there's a lot of uh maybe too many tracks like that are instrumental or but but if you look at it from another side of the coin it's like well man there's even like what could be considered today dungeon synth on this thing i mean martial, two of the martial industrial for sure sure yeah i mean bjornson was really uh experimenting with that kind of stuff so i mean they just kind of came up with this big stew of uh of sounds and I, I mean, in a lot of ways, it propelled the sort of idea of Viking metal, even though this is kind of black metal. But again, you know, and, and the, I never want to call Bork Nagar a progressive band because I don't I've always felt that they've had, you know, a tinge of, of prog, but they've never been overly progressive, whereas Enslaved really kind of went that that route. But it still shares the similarities when the Enslaved's debut is that. We, we, we could already tell that this is going to be a different kind of band when we go forward. And uh, this is the experiment that created all of that. But there's some great stuff on here, especially the uh, in the middle of the, I mean, everything in here is good, uh, but it still just um, holds up, you know. And uh, for me, I, I didn't come to appreciate it until a little bit later uh, in my black metal journey. But uh, I would say the, the, the one, two, three punch of track five, six, and seven I should say the four punch, four, five, six, and seven. I'm not going to try to pronounce because this is all Norwegian uh, titles. But man, that middle section is where it just really gets amazing, and you get you get a lot more variation. In Garm's vocals, uh, getting to hear kind of some of his. He just he just had that style that made you think of uh, just just being on one of those uh, to mountain rove on one of these giant boats or something, you know. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so are we going to rank as we go, or are we yeah. going to save that for the end? Okay. Um, we'll rank as we as, go. As as Melanie said, this is an impossible discography for me to rank. I mean, at any time, this could be number one for me. Uh, but given the work, as we'll get through, I decided to rank this at number five. And uh, yeah, so amazing classic album that uh, still stands the test of time today. It would have been cool to like hear them kind of go a little bit more in this direction for a little while yeah as we'll see, changed yeah. pretty quickly after this but um i think it just makes this record that much more special because it was so unique in that way and that it, it has never really been quite replicated by them or really anybody so 
Right on. Good start out of the gate. Melanie, you're up. I'm smiling because I feel like Jimmy's probably going to have a similar ranking <laughs> as me tonight. Um, so this album is definitely special for me. Uh, I probably credit it as like maybe my top three black metal albums of all time. That's not really saying a whole lot because I don't have a whole lot of black metal albums I totally love. <laughs> but this is definitely one that I find to be incredibly special. A lot of people dog on the the instrumental aspects of it. And even like you said, it's almost dungeon synthy, like MIDI sounding, maybe a little bit more MIDI sounding back then. Um, but I think that's probably what makes this album so good. Are those, those instrumentals that get added in here because it's stuff that I had never really heard when I first, this album, when I first heard this album before, like it was something that just kind of wowed me. It's like, wow. And I think about it now when I listen to the raw or black metal albums that come out nowadays, they're just not as in depth and layered like Borknagar's album was. They're just not as like creative. Uh, they just focus too heavy on the fast tremolo riffing and then the really harsh screaming and not enough variance throughout the album to make it interesting enough. Don't get mad at me, people. There's a lot of people that are probably sitting here like, what? Uh, <laughs> but like, that's what makes that album so special for me. So. Uh, and I, I listen to it still, like every once in a while, if I'm in really in the mood for that cold, frosty, harsh sounding black metal, like this is generally one that I'll pull and listen to. Um, I do wish that they had continued on with this a little bit more. It'd be, it would have been interesting to see how farther they could have gone with this type of black metal style, but it, it doesn't deter me from what they eventually moved into either. So I feel like this is a two different bands almost uh with this album but yeah i also ranked it at a five which was really hard because for the longest time i this was one of my favorite borknagar albums but then others came out that just really changed my mind also i'm older now so i feel like that has a lot to do with it right on alan all right well like i said earlier i am very late to this particular album so i don't have a lot of history with this one but I'd agree with you know Jimmy and Melanie's assessment overall. The band comes out of the gate, and you know they're a fully realized entity. They didn't need an album or two to kind of figure out what they wanted to do. They didn't have to ma massively reinvent themselves after the first album like some other you know Norwegian bands did. They didn't stumble around like summoning you know on their debut and then find their voice. This is, yeah, an absolutely very solid, well-thought-out black metal album as the debut. And like you said, Marty, you know, the fact that you know it's kind of got super group status, those kind of projects can, in general, be sort of iffy. You can get too many cooks in the kitchen and end up with something that just never has a direction or an identity, but that's not the case here. A lot uh, of the, a band like this jumps ahead of the line pretty mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah, yeah, you know, it'll get a lot of attention very quickly. But yeah, sometimes those can be a flop. But uh, yeah, in this case, you know, everybody seemed to yeah work really well together on it. Um, I very much agree with Jimmy's point that the middle of this album is the best part. You know, that when you hit those middle tracks, um, I will take a stab at uh, butchering the. I'm gonna try to. Love them. <laughs> Why not? Uh, but yeah, like around like you know. Um, you know, Krigstev is one of the instrumentals. Then Dowden, uh, Dowden. Grimskull, yeah. Trell. Th those tracks, yeah, this was, you know, the part, the first part of the album, I'm like, yeah, okay, everything's fine here. This is, you know, solid. But, you know, it gets to that part, it's like, oh, okay, now here it's really found its footing, uh, really strong. Yeah, and it's okay towards the end, too. Now, like Melanie said, I, I do deduct some points because of the massive amount of instrumentals on here. Um, you, you have five instrumental tracks yeah. out of ten songs. Five and five. It's almost a, it's almost a black metal EP, basically. A, exactly. That, that's exactly what I was about to say. It's sorry. It feel, no, no. It's a good point. I'm uh, glad others noticed that too. Some of the instrumental stuff isn't bad. I don't mean it in that sense at all. But that's a lot of instrumentals to pack onto an album. It does maybe hint at you, know, you had a handful of songs ready, and some ideas that you didn't finish. Um, like we've said, this band got a lot of attention pretty quickly. I don't know if there was a kind of push to get something out, you know, strike while there was a lot of hype. Maybe not. Maybe they really were just trying to incorporate more of, you know, uh, instrumental based music. That's okay. You know, but for me, that you know, is something that I am not overly fond of, uh, but these are done well, you know, certainly credit where it's due. 
So yeah, for me again, I don't have the big history. I know a lot of folks rank this album very high. Nothing wrong with it. I I would rank the I've got this one ranked eighth uh, for tonight, and I am. Let's see. In terms of the like I score, I would still rank this as maybe you know close to like eight out of ten territory. You know, it's not like I'm you know slagging it. It's just a little further down the ranking because there's some stuff later on that I prefer a lot more. But yeah, still an eight out of ten. Let's call it like a, a B minus. You know, for me, an album is a B when it's really good, really solid, and I like it. The minus one is when there's something that sticks with me. And five instrumentals, it, it bugs me enough that uh, I got to deduct a few points for that. So I'll rank it number eight, but still point out that yes, it, it is a very good album. Uh, and Marty, let's see, we've got a five, a five, and eight, and let's see where you're going to put this one. What are your two cents? Well, um, this is the first album I heard by this band. So obviously most people, the first one you hear is the one you love the most. This is my number one, straight up. I'll get that out of the way. Um, okay. I love the folk elements, meet Norwegian black metal. And yeah, I did the math too. There's five metal tracks, five non-metal tracks. I think two of them are completely keyboard synthesizer. Three of them are folk inspired guitar based instrumentals without drums. Um, think of uh, some of the tracks on some of the Burzum albums, the guitar songs. They feel like that, but way better. Oystein's obviously a, a much yep. better instrumentalist than Varg ever was. But um, I love this album. I love the black metal spirit of it. I love Garm's vocals. I'm going to be critical of what he does on the next album big time. But and his, his grim vocals have always been awesome. Just absolutely scathing. You can just hear the the fierceness coming out of his pipes. And, you know, we got part of that on Bergtot. We got a lot of that on the awesome Nettens Madrigal. And that's really about it. You know, so I'm on Arcturus, Arcturus as well, the first Arcturus album. But um, he quickly moved on to other pastures. But, again, Oystein's, um his guitar work, is so inspired sounding to me. He's got just such a colorful life, lively guitar playing style. And his use of melody is very unique, very folky mixed in with the black metal. It's excellent. Excellent. Um, and I'm going to disagree with you a bit, Jimmy. I think as they went on, you hit the, uh, Vintersorg era, they became very proggy, very, very, very proggy, but we'll get into that. But there's hints of that progginess on, it's funny because Infernus is the guy doing the bass work. And if you listen to Gorgoroth, you don't really necessarily think of, you know, instrumentally challenging music. It's just more of a hateful uh, sound. Well, hints of that proggy progression are found on the busy bass line behind the verse of Frandon's Alheim. These are like really playful bass lines. I'm just like, wow. I, in fact, I forgot Infernus was in this. And when I was looking it up for this, I'm like, oh shit, that's him. And, um, Really, really quite good. Um, Winter Vriedet's Jilsang? I don't know. Utterly fierce opener with triumphant chanted vocal breaks in the harsh firestorm of black metal sc uh, screams and urgent folk fused riff ideas detonate with what's to come. God, I love it. Such a great opener. Fargskog's Gilda. I love the m movement and flow of this track. And how the bass line and synth accompaniment enhance the endlessly unique guitar lines. That I love the the synth lines as a support system. As they get the um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, Lars from uh, um, Solifall later on, it gets way more prominent. But um, Garm's vocals are scathing and fantastic throughout, and the instrumentals. I, I see what you're saying, Alan, but I think that they're 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 paced well throughout the track listing. They are. Mm -hmm. They 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 really knew where to stick them, and um, the ones that are basically synth based sound very martial industrial, which I do like. It adds a different flavor to the atmosphere, and of course the guitar, the full conspired guitar pieces are really emotive and cool. They're not just throwaway riffs, uh, throwaway tracks to me. They actually contribute to the overall atmosphere of the album. So yeah, it's, it's a number one for me all day. I, I try to tell ask myself, is it because, is it because it's the first one I heard or is it just because I, I struggle? I mean, if you watch the show, I mean, Prague, I, I think Prague is endlessly talented. Don't get me wrong here, but 
it just does not sit well with me. I just, I have a hard time with it. We'll get into that more here, but this here is more anchored in a style that I love, which is the Norwegian black metal. So yeah, this has always been a standout for me. I love this album. Have I forgotten anything here? Looking at my notes. Um, yeah, I just think Borknagar on this album um, proved the importance of the supergroup in the Norwegian um, culture, musical culture, because it kind of exploded. The more labels got involved, obviously the stuff took off and the labels wanted to gulp up as much as they could. Yeah, some supergroups weren't as good as others, but most of them were at least good. Some of them were great. Borknagar started out incredibly great. So, yep, and that brings us into 1997, The Olden Domain. Let's say anything, anybody wants to add anything to that before we move on? I, I will say that the English titles of this album, I think, were recently put on the remastered version. Hmm. So it's all in Norwegian, but they have it like in parentheses now, all which right. made me happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. All right, Jimmy, what happened in 1997? All right, the Olden Domain. This is another uh, Century Media pressing. And uh, like Mel was saying, like earlier before we got uh, live, as, like some of the stuff is really kind of hard to find for a while. So like most of my collection came from just getting lucky and finding used uh, copies of these things. But uh, I think uh, <clears throat> this is where Cosmic Key Creations comes in, starts to repress uh, all these uh, these upcoming Century. Or this was uh, actually Century Black when Century Media had the black label. So, wow, uh, quite a difference from the debut. And uh, I think for this record, I think they really kind of landed on where they wanted to go in a way. Um, Gone is the more raw black metal style and it's ultimately something completely different. Even though there's a lot of elements of what they were you know, hinting towards with uh, the first record, <clears throat> things changed quite a bit here. And, uh, for me, uh, this is not my favorite. Uh, I think this is a good record, and uh, there's definitely a lot of things that I like about it. It was interesting, and that's what I always love about these deep dives is like kind of forces me to go and really listen to all the albums because this one I had not gone back to in a while, and I was like kind of excited to go back and say, like, has my thoughts changed on it? And uh, a little bit, I think. Uh, this, it, it's basically they like i was saying with the first record they were uh you know had this sort of big stew that they were trying to figure out what what the sound was going to be and they kind of landed on maybe a more uh accessible sound um borderline progressive in some senses some proggy elements but ultimately like having that viking style in place i mean all the imagery the the lyrics uh everything is in uh, for the most part is in english at this point but uh yeah so you're going to hear a lot of where they are today, really going back to this record. But uh, for me, it seems perfectly natural. And I think uh, hearing Marty's comments uh, about Garm before, and I think we're going to be uh, in agreement here is that I don't like Garm on this record. And uh, I, as much as I love Garm and uh, there's a lot of stuff that I really love him on uh, a lot of stuff that I just like a lot of all verse stuff that I'm not really my thing, but uh it, feel, it feels natural to me that this was the last record uh, with him in the band. And I think that maybe uh, whether he was going to just kind of help them out here, I don't really know the full story, or it just felt natural that uh, at this point he wasn't really quite like, I just, to me, it didn't really fit with what they were doing here. And <clears throat> a lot more clean vocals too. So how can you say that Garm's clean vocals are not good? It's not that they're not good. It's just kind of a weird fit. And uh, end up sounding kind of goofy a little bit at times. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's got that, you know, that I walk toward the rising autumn. It's like, <laughs> okay, whoa, <laughs> take it down there. Well, and, he sings uh, out of key and he warbles a lot on this album. Yeah. And it yeah, drives like, me nuts. When he's on, he's like on. The, but oof. Yeah. It's like the black metal Eddie Vedder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's a good way to put it Mel. yeah it's it's i mean and, and and you know some of it he's got some some grim vocals in here too which is cool but it's just kind of a it's a little wonky this album like the the drums are kind of sloppy i don't think that grim was a very good fit as a drum like when he goes on the blast beats he's killing it you know but when he's trying to like play more to the song it, it kind of just feels a little a little off and not really quite the fit that they need uh for the band so um as a result the whole album just comes off as kind of um you know, 
maybe could have could be considered experimental at the time, but just didn't really quite fit together with what they were doing. But that said, there's a lot of good songs on here. The Winter Way is is great. Uh, my favorite song is Grimland Domain. Uh, fantastic Bork Nagar song. I really like the uh, the Ivor Bjornsson uh, piano piece track three. I just think that's really um, just got a really good melody to it. But largely, uh, just a lot of the times it's just uh, mm, Garm. You know, I would have liked to have heard this with the sound of like the Vortex uh, on vocals. It would be interesting to hear. But uh, yeah, so as a result for me, I've listened to it quite a bit to see uh, if, if, if I could change with it. Um, but yeah, to me, this is kind of a, still an experiment that's not quite where they need to be. And a result uh, comes at number 10 for me in the uh, in the ranking. So, yep. Do right. what you will with that. But uh, Garm didn't do it for me on this one. Right on. Melanie. I'm actually, sh I'm actually shocked about that. I thought that was going to be a little bit higher. Um, I agree. This, this album is kind of a, a, a mess to begin all around. But also, it's the first Borknagar album that I ever heard. So there's a little bit of nostalgic this for this for me. Um, I like how terrible the vocals are at times. I think it just makes it a unique, weird listen. Um, and again, they have instrumental tracks in here, only two this time. Uh, and those are just, they go really well. I really like how they fit on this album. They just do instrumentals really, really well. This band is, mm -hmm. they just really nail it every time they do it on an album. They're nice companion uh, pieces up against. They break up the track listing yeah. very well. Yeah. I like how there's still that raw black metal sound to it. And then they start to incorporate, you know, more of that Viking metal, clean singing feel to it. But there's also still the frostiness there. Uh, they're still kind of treading that a little bit. Uh, but it is a it is an overall sloppy album now. When I go back and listen to it, I realize there's a lot of things that drive me a little bit crazy. Just like it just sounds like a 90s album, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, but I still have I still really enjoy it and I still have a lot of you know, sentimental feelings towards it. And I agree with Logan. The Eye of Odin is such a phenomenal opening song. Um, and I also love Grimland Domain. I think Grimland Domain is probably the first song, Borknagar song I ever heard. So there's a little bit of a, a holding on to that. Um, but I'm going to rank this at four. <laughs> um, it's still pretty high up in my discography. I still find that I listen to this quite a bit. I like the quirkiness of it. It's a pretty quirky album if you really like dig into it and pay attention to what's going on. Um, and it's just a unique listen. Uh, it's not a copy paste, you know, black metal album that i would find myself listening to nowadays so i i, I enjoy it probably a little bit more than some people right on alan all right i'm going to join team melanie on uh this one um old and domain for me yes you know th there are definitely some you know weird you know audible things that go on here and there it is not a perfect you know album in terms of performances wouldn't argue that that said, it's got a lot of songs that are still fantastic. And I agree with Melanie's take on it that, you know, it's a varied album. They're doing different things. They're not doing anything outrageous. There's nothing crazy. No one's completely shitting the bed and they're not wandering off, you know, into like, you know, psychedelic, you know, trip hop fluff territory or anything. But yeah, they're finding their feet. Like Jim, like you said, Jimmy, they're, you know, they're finding the direction they're going to go in here. Um, and they're already doing a pretty good job with it. They're not really having to flounder around to get it to click into place. It's, yeah, just a matter of, you know, maybe vocals are a little odd here or, you know, something else. There's, you know, a part here and there that, yeah, it doesn't quite fit right. But nevertheless, it's an album that, yeah, I can still go back to from time to time. And every time I do, I really enjoy it. Um, you know, there are certain songs that always stick out. Winterway is one of my favorite uh Borknagar songs. Yeah, I like Gremlin uh, Domain. Uh, Eye of Odin is a very good opening track, agreed. Uh, there's one other, uh, you know, To Mountain Rove uh, is pretty good. Yeah. I will say um, the album, you know, the front, it feels a little front loaded. The best stuff is way up front. You know, when you get to the very end of the album, it feels like maybe it's, you know, kind of, you know, staggering across the finish line just a tad. But yeah, I like what they're doing. I like the direction they're taking on here. Um, yes, you know, the fact that it doesn't feel like just every other 
black metal band or black metal album helps quite a bit. And I think I agree with what you've said before, Marty. A lot of that, you know, is Oyston's guitar playing and songwriting. He's not trying to be overtly just, you know, raw, true cult blasty. Like Jimmy said, he's not going overtly proggy here or anything. But, you know, there's touches of all of that, and it makes mm -hmm. for a pretty unique sound, which a lot of bands, you know. It's very organic. Like one way or the other. That's a nice term for it. Mm -hmm. As usual, you can say in one word what I can say in 40. <laughs> yeah, it, it does have a very organic sound to it. Um, so, yeah, yeah, again, like Melanie too, it was the first Portnagar album I heard. So I admit there's some sentimental bias to it. But the fact that I can still go back to it and find it still has a really similar quality helps a lot. It's one of those albums every time I revisit it. It's been like, yeah, it's been a few years. Is this really going to hold up? I'm always a little skeptical, a little worried about hitting the play button. And then I plan, like, no, it, it holds up quite good. It's still a really enjoyable listen. So I've actually got this ranked as number two. Um, that could go down or up as I get more familiar. There are some Bork Nagar albums I'm not very familiar with that I like a lot. Over time, those might surpass this one. But, you know, this one's got a really long track record of holding up well for me. So I'm putting it number two tonight. And uh, I don't think Marty is going to join uh, Team Alan and Melanie here. But let's find out. Well, in spite of my complaints with this record, I do like it. I think um, it's an obvious evolution. Mm -hmm. um, the, the thing that bums me out, it's an album's worth of excellent music marred by occasional out-of-key singing and warbling. When he's on, he's on, like I mentioned, but he does get into this warble. I don't know if he just couldn't find a key for the, some of these riffs or he was just trying to be a little extra creative, but it's annoying and it's a bit loud in the mix. So it's even more so is loud. Um, yeah. Yeah. The yeah, mix this, is bad. Yep. Out of key singing. Okay. Uh, more of a roomy and loose production on this, which is kind of odd. Um, it expands nicely on the organic atmosphere an obvious desire for Oyston's artistic progression. Um, yeah, it's a, more of a live sound. It isn't as tight. It's very loose feeling, which is weird. I've always enjoyed this album, but half of Garm's clean vocals always bug me, 100%. Um, favorite tracks, I Have Odin, of course. Uh, the Winter Way, I love the speed riffs in this one. Mm -hmm. Up against the Volky tr Folky Transitions, great song. Uh, Tale of Pagan Tongue, which is maybe the best musical piece on the album, for me anyway. The Dawn of the End, a fantastic closer, ends the album with an even more emotive flow. It's, it's kind of cool. It was a downtrodden song, and it just had, Garm kind of nailed it on that one. Um, he's a little scattershot in his performance on here, and even his grim vocals. I don't know if it's the mic they were using in the studio or the way they produced it. It just seems like it just doesn't have the searing quality that he had displayed in other albums and other bands you know maybe it was just at the end of his maybe he blew it out i don't know i mean it's still good but it's just not it doesn't have that really gritting feel to it but yep anything to add before we move on to the next one where do you rank it marty oh shit i'm cheating off of melanie's paper number four okay that's because some of the Vinter Sorg albums really don't sit well with me. So anyway, yeah, um, that brings us to 1998's The Archaic Course, Jimmy. All right. This is, uh, I think this is just a black on black pressing. But uh, as I stated in the earlier in the stream, this is where I come in to the band. And Archaic Course, 1998, Wow. So 2001, I think it was for me, or 2000, something like that, uh, you know, looking for more Vortex, and I found it here. And, you know, I think they kind of got a little bit better from the last record in terms of what they were trying to do with the band. Mm. Feel. Uh, so the, the lineup has changed quite a bit with Vortex on vocals, and uh, I guess his first real effort in a full length. I don't know that he did anything really, you know, big – big guns before this i know he did the arcturus track was there's uh lamented souls too i need yeah. to check what, souls. see what uh year that came out uh yeah. vortex oh, um boy this is a deeply nostalgic album for me uh you know at the time i was still living in new orleans before i'd moved to colorado and uh was playing music at the time and uh lamented you know, souls started in 92 
Oh, okay. Yeah, that was kind of his first. Did they really do anything? They put out a, a compilation of the... Um, God damn it. Why is it... Confirm form resubmission. Uh, did anybody else notice that Metal Archives yeah, Metal is Archives doing weird seven. shit? Yeah. Yes, they are. They, they, they keep know. verifying that I'm human is yeah. the message I get over and over. Yeah. Origins yeah. of Misery is the, the full... Link. I've got it here. So, right here. I need to go back to that. I don't think I've even ever heard that album. And at the time... That's it right there. And it's a compilation okay. of their other other stuff. So basically they put out demos and stuff and then they compiled it all onto this here. So, yep. Yeah. Anyway, um, sorry. But yeah, sorry for the uh, interruption. Oh, no worries. No worries. Uh, this, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I got exactly what I wanted. As I said, I was looking for more Vortex and I certainly got it here. And uh, this one, uh, again, they just, uh, and I'm going to say this a lot going forward in the stream is that uh, the earworms, man, you know, and that's what I go for with Bork Nagar is the earworms. It's the stuff that sticks in my head and the stuff that, and this is nice and varied too, because it's a lot of uh, Vortex clean vocals, but there's still a little bit of, uh, you know, semi escaping black metal songs, such as Ad Noctum and uh, the Black the Black Token. But uh, Ocean's Rise, I mean, that's a classic oh. uh, Bork Nagar song. That's, uh, you know, is instantly recognizable. Uh, Universal's great. I mean, Witching Hour, I mean, you really get into some amazing. If you're a fan of Vortex, I mean, you know as well as I do that. I mean, for me, this is some of his finest work, and he's done quite a bit since then. But, uh, yeah, uh, Winter Millennium, man. I mean, that's that that one just really, really sticks. with the. There's something about uh, Ivar Bjornsson's contributions to this that – really just you know it wasn't just like sense in the background i felt like he really um you know contributed some sounds that uh made the songs better uh, in a lot of ways and i guess uh, this is his last record with the band it is uh, even though he wasn't even really a member of the band he just kind of uh contributed to the recording uh but i oh, god i love that that last that outro is just there's something about that outro it's like it's just kind of this soundscapey kind of synthy thing but it just brings to mind looking across the Norwegian forests and uh, hearing the, you know, the wild animals. And uh, just, I remember being like, uh, you know, I've often talked about things that like drew me to wilderness. This is one of those albums that uh, did that for me and uh, kind of created that sort of yearning in my, in my heart for it in a lot of ways, so, you mm -hmm. know, and not being in a place where I was able to sort of experience that. So I think this, uh, this was one of those albums that contributed to that, but uh yeah, deeply. I, you know, I think they really got a lot better too. I mean, uh, this is the last record with Grimm on drums as well, and uh, I think he did a little bit better job for me uh, than he did on uh, on the previous record. But uh, I think it was still them, in a lot of ways, trying to, to work things out and see where they're going to go. Uh, this is my number one, and uh, it's not to say that I think that this is their greatest work. But I, you know, a lot of times you pick your number one from a band's discography from the album that you came in on. And that's very, very true for me for oh, this sure. album. It's just so nostalgic. And so I just remember where I was listening to it over and over again. Uh, it was really a, an amazing intro for me uh, to the world of Norway and just a lot of other albums. And it still took me a while to really just get into uh, just black metal in general, because I mean, this is not a black metal album at all. I mean, it's just got some, some elements there, but um, yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, number one for me and it, it, I still, to this day, listen to it and uh, find a lot of joy in it for sure. So, um, yeah. All right. Oh, Please. and I will say real quick, yep. um, it's good. Uh, I, I do dig the cover art here. I mean, uh, and we're going to find that Bork Nagar has never really had very good cover art for the most part. Especially uh, the I mean, next album. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I would, I would say, you know, a lot of the records, but uh, you know, I would say like the, the, the best cover arts that they have are kind of just, just fine, you know, and this is, this is kind of just fine. It's not anything special, but it's cool. And they always had this sort of little uh, sigil, uh, whatever you want to call it, as sort of a staple of the Bork Nagar uh, imagery. And I uh, still never really uh, figured out exactly what this is. Not that I've really looked it up and tried to figure it out, but it's um, like a Norwegian it's, it's yin and yang is what it kind of yeah. looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was a Turkey or something, but <laughs> Good right. shit, guys. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, Melanie. I definitely am going to be shot here. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> this album took me a long time to really enjoy. Uh, I think when I first heard it, it was after 
you know, hearing the the olden domain in, in Borknagar was really into the black metal sound. And at the time of hearing this, Amana Marth was really big and popular. And they mm. were literally on every single freaking tour that I went to. And I just was really done with the whole Viking metal, like Nordic thing. So when I started hearing those elements in this album, it kind of killed it for me at the time. And it took me a while to get back to this discography for that reason. Like I kind of dropped them at this album. I was like, well, this band is no longer for me. Um, I enjoy it now. Uh, there's still some things about it that drive me a little bit crazy. It, it, it seems pretty um, ambitious, I guess you could say, with what they're trying to do when you go and you hear the first two albums and then this one. Um, it just kind of seemed like it might have been a little bit all over the place, which is funny to think because I'm a huge prog fan and I like when albums get like that and when there's really no rhyme or reason when they do stuff. But for this one, it just took a, a little bit while for me to digest. Uh, the vocals kind of drove me a little bit crazy um, first hearing this and it was a little bit harder to digest. I was also in very much in this realm of clean vocals were a big no-no <laughs> for music mm. when I first heard this. I was very much the stereotypical metalhead of it has to be a guttural or a scream. It cannot have any sort of clean. No style piggy singing. snare, no bree bree yeah. bree. Uh, I mean, no, I definitely was listening to like devourment and stuff. So there was some bree bree and piggy snare. That, that, that's probably what killed it for me. To be honest with you. Um, so I was like, if I want clean vocals, I want. I'm going to listen to alternative and you know classic rock. I don't want that in my my metal music. Um, so I have this at seven um, because it has grown on me quite a bit now that I am away from those stubborn ways of thinking for music and I've opened up my ears a little bit more. But there are other albums that I enjoy a lot more in their, their discography. And some people are probably thinking, what the fuck? Because I know that this is your favorite album, <laughs> but I'm just going to kill everybody, I think, tonight with my ranking. <laughs> I think everybody's going to ebb and flow here. You know what I mean? Like, I oh, mean, cause sure. everybody likes kind of different things about these albums and you know, it's, it's cool that way. It's cool to see, you know, I mean, uh, Tyler just said it's background music to him, which is kind of surprising. Uh, <laughs> kind of, I really do. <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna vary. And that's, that's cool. I think we're all going to come together in a few spots here and there. <laughs> For sure. Alan. We'll see. Well, uh, opinions on this album have always been kind of split. And, and I think we've seen that with, uh, you know, Jiminy and, and uh, Melanie's take on it so far. There are some folks that like this album a lot. And there are some folks that criticize this album a lot. And it was kind of that way when it came out. It got a lot of praise. But, you know, there were some people that did not get into it at all. Um, I got this, I'm pretty sure, through a trade not long after it came out through one of the old uh, heavy metal forums online. Because somebody had gotten it, you know, played it for a few weeks. And I was like, I just don't like this. Anybody else want it? It's like, no, no, I'll trade you something for it. Because I hadn't heard it yet. I liked the olden domains. Like, no, I'll check it out. But yeah, re reviews were mixed. Um, it is an album, you know, it took me a while to warm up to. Not, not as long as Melanie. To be very clear here, I'm being traded from Team Melanie to Team Jimmy for this album. <laughs> um <laughs> It wasn't like, you know, an instant love, though. It's one I had to play it, you know, a bunch of times to start to really get a good feel for the album. But it, I did get there. Um, I think you're right, Melanie. They are trying to be very ambitious. You know, Vortex in particular is really trying to, you know, do everything on this album. He's doing these high whales and coming back down into, you know, a normal range and stuff. So, yeah, the, the album covers a lot of ground. Um, you know, but that said, you know, it's got some outstanding material on it. Ocean's Rise is probably my favorite Borknagar song. It's definitely like the Borknagar song I immediately think of. If you just like say the name and, you know, here's a band, name a song. Ocean's Rise or Winter Way, those are always going to be the two songs that I blurred out immediately for this band. It's also one of those albums that, you know, over time, it's actually gradually gotten better and better for me. You know, when I first kind of, you know, got over the hump with it, you know, there were like, you know, three songs I really liked on it. I think it's the first three. And as time's gone by, it's kind of added more and more songs to it. Like, you know, Jimmy mentioned, you know, Ad Noctum. So, yeah, you know, that was, you know, a song I connected with a little later 
um, after, you know, having the album for a longer time. So, um, yeah, for me, it's a very strong album. Um, it's not, you know, band at their tightest. It still, you know, has its flaws, but I actually would also rank it number one. I've got it as my favorite Bortnagar album. And like, I'm in the same boat with Jimmy here too. I'm not saying it's a perfect album. It's, you know, it's not an A plus kind of thing for me. It's, you know, it's, I want to give it like an 8.9 out of 10. I'm, I'm going to be, you know, just a, a bit of a nit and not give it that extra 0.1 to get it to the 9 out of 10. But once again, it's an album that has a long track record with me. It's always held up well. And it's actually, you know, gradually gotten, you know, sort of stronger with time also. I can always go back to this album, you know, enjoy it. And it feels like one every now and then I kind of notice something I didn't notice before. And so, you know, that's why I ended up putting it number one over Olden Domain. Olden Domain has the same kind of track record with me, but I never really discover anything new in that record at this point. Whereas, uh, yeah, Archaic Course, I do. And uh, I, I also, again, you know, Showing my loyalty to my new team and Jimmy here, I also like the cover on this one. I think this cover is very, very much encapsulates kind of the spirit of Bortnagar, having both that wintry and also that kind of cosmic aspect, well balanced at the same time. And then you got that big, ugly red seal right in the middle of it. Uh, sure, I am fine with that. So, this ass kissing um, still won't make you team leader. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> team jimmy has you, got other plans for you mister <laughs> you don't know you don't know that yet I mean, we'll, yeah, you're we'll, gonna change we'll, your tune on that pretty soon i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I might be uh i might be swapping teams frequently tonight we'll uh <laughs> we'll see how it goes i'll just have to make sure that uh you know my translator doesn't start ripping me off for 16 million dollars as i uh negotiate my contracts <laughs> right all right but marty so uh, yes we've got uh two number ones and a number seven. So uh, how's this going to average out with your grade? Well, Seaman Hesness, otherwise known as ICS Vortex, enters the band. And I think his most pivotal, pivotal moment is the Chaos Path song off of the La Dance Masquerade Infernal Arcturus album. The only song on that album I like is that Chaos Path song. It's kind of a circus vibe. Uh, Siemens vocals are just absolutely bonkers killer on that thing. And he has got one of those vocal styles that is very polarizing. You can see it in the chat tonight. It's mm -hmm. like the King Diamond voice. Either you love it or you hate it. There's not a whole lot of middle ground here. The people that are in the middle grow one way or other. Um, but I love his vocals. I think he has a very playful uh, way of messing with harmony. He... He seems entirely, utterly free with his singing. He can, his grim vocals are on point, especially on this album. His pitch singing is in key. And he, he, I think actually he's a bit, you know, if you take the chaos path into consideration, the performance on this album is more or less rather subdued, but it's still, there's moments he kicks it up a bit and it's just fantastic. I, I think he, um, definitely elevates an already excellent band to higher heights, if that makes any sense. I think um, Olden Domain, oh, I'm sorry, um, Arcade Course is far more organized and tight sounding production wise. And the songs don't seem like there's a lot of frayed ends. They seem very consistent and thought out here. Very well planned. No pitch issues on this like his predecessor. There's no Garm level warbling. The warbling makes sense within his unique way of phrasing i love it um favorite songs on here my all the favorite song on here is universal uh, favorite song on the album was siemens emotional exciting clean tones and vocal harmonies and placement excellent oceans rise a fantastic opener ad noctum it's got the circus vibe uh from that hammond organ tone interesting and powerful track it's just song after song they're all really consistent there are its standouts but the, the good thing here is you've got one guy doing all the heavy lifting and he is on point on everything he does. And that permeates most of his career as far as I know. We're going to get into some other stuff that he's done here too, as we go, I've got a little thing set aside, but um, yeah, that brings us that. Oh, my number three, this is my number three album. Three. Okay. Yep. 
Which brings us to the year 2000 and Quintessence. Jimmy, which this cover <laughs> is an abysmal <laughs> slapping of crap together <laughs> with someone's first uh, edition of Photoshop. Anyway, what you got? I'm going to go to the bathroom. Good way to put it. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I kind of already voiced my opinions on this record uh, when we did our uh, albums that grew on us stream, but uh, I think, and that was kind of the one that sort of prompted the stream. But um, yeah, you know, talking about the artwork, are you guys getting a delay? I wonder if Marty left uh, something. So anyway, uh, yeah, if it doesn't. Sorry, my bad. Ah, right, no worries. There we go. Okay. Uh, uh, interesting he talks about the artwork because I, I feel like the artwork kind of dates this record in a lot of ways because I remember at the time, I mean, this is 2000. Yeah, 2000 that this came out. So, you know, at the time, uh, we're starting to get big into the interwebs and there's a lot of digital art coming out. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of um, you know, the whole issue right now is the AI generated art for well, these days, although you were seeing a lot more of uh, just like the Photoshop style kind of stuff. And I remember thinking it was really cool. I mean, at the time, and this is kind of uh, dated for me because I was learning Photoshop at the time and I was in school and uh, I just thought that this was like, oh man, how did he do that? It has not aged well, for sure. And uh, it's, it looks kind of crappy now that you look at it. It's this digital kind of, because as Gear Mickelson, who was the new drummer, on the record that did the arts and would do so for the next few albums. Uh, but as I talked about on the, our last stream, this was a grower for me. Uh, having gotten into the archaic course so much uh, and then coming to this record, it was like a 180. And this is really quite different. Uh, I mean, you know, the, the core of Borknagar sound is starting to continue on in all these records, but this one, uh, it's a little weirder. I mean, it's obviously a big lineup change with uh, bringing uh, Lazar from Solifold into the fold, mm -hmm. as well as the aforementioned uh, As Asgar uh, Mickelson, who is a great drummer, did some amazing stuff with the uh, bands like Spiral Architect. Um, and this was kind of a cool, uh, you know, for the first time, Bork Nagar has kind of a more proggy drummer compared to Grimm, who was more of a black metal guy that was sort of, uh, you know, trying to kind of continue with the band. And I think, unfortunately, he died uh, after uh, or before this was uh, recorded. But, yeah, it's it's definitely a grower. It's 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 got a little bit of weirdness to it. And uh, it's got also, uh, you know, Brain Smasher's favorite producer of all time uh, pr on production duties here, Peter Tachron. I mean, it doesn't sound like a Tachron production. It sounds weird. This is a weird, it, it doesn't sound like him. I'm surprised. I didn't look at that. I'm surprised. Well, I mean, regardless, uh, you know, Ben loves this shit. It's his favorite producer of all time. I know. But, totally. Uh, yeah. And just, uh, you know, could can do no wrong. But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's just, uh, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. I mean, uh, it just, for me, like having, like I said, come from Archaic Course, uh, I didn't get into this at first. It really kind of kind of left me scratching my head. I didn't really get it. And uh, some years later, as I started to listen to it a lot more, uh, it clicked. And uh, I really, I really love the record. Um, and of course, as I've uh, talked about before, this is where I get my internet moniker. Uh, Ruins of the Future is probably my favorite song on here. Uh, I just love that, that melody, that, that keyboard melody in the beginning of this. So, so killer. And obviously Colossus, uh, the presence is ominous. That's where it gets kind of weird. And Vortex sounds a little weird to me in, in some spots here, but kind of suits him in a way uh, because he can do, you know, all that shit. But, uh, and, and, and uh, Alan brought up on, I don't know if it was, I think he was talking about uh, the second record that uh, one of the themes also that you'll hear from me is this is where Bort Nagar records typically are front loaded, you know, where the first half of the record is like the best songs. And then the second half is kind of just like what they had left over and maybe not not to say that it's not good it's just like from here on out we're going to see a very similar what i like to call the bork nagar template uh <laughs> each record you know and uh and uh that's going to really intensify on the next record but uh yeah uh interesting uh it seems like they're always in transition this band uh up to this point where every record is not quite where they land they're always and, and and that's not to say like i talked about i don't view them as overly progressive 
because for me, I mean, like they'll introduce prog elements, but it's all about the earworms at the end of the day and how mm. are they gonna, and the memorability of the songs. But uh, I like that, you know, this one is, it, it, I, I feel like it's kind of an outlier from the rest of their discography, this album. Um, you know, they, they, in a lot of ways, they never really replicated the, the sort of the, the, the weird vibe that this one has. So, but it was a grow for me. I have it uh, ranked at number eight. Uh, which doesn't mean uh, that I don't like it. I, I really, really did this record, but uh, it's, you know, again, hard discography to uh, to rank here. But uh, yep, quintessence. All right, Melanie. Yeah, when I first heard this album, I hated it, <laughs> um, and I don't say that very often for music. But I felt like they were trying to go back to the black metal roots of the band, and just it didn't work for who this band was at the time. And I kind of had wished that they would just have kept going from the archaic course and like started to move where they really wanted to go. But instead they tried to take a little bit more of a step back with this album, maybe doing over fans. I'm not too sure. Uh, so this one was definitely a grower on me as well. Uh, and over the years, I find that I enjoy it a little bit more than I ever have. Uh, but I honestly can't remember. This was, this week was probably the first time I had listened to it in quite a few years. And it definitely is not one that I've ever felt the need to own, <laughs> um, which is, is saying a lot because I am a complete is similar to Marty. I like to own every single album in the discography from a band that I love. But this is definitely one of those albums that I really had to grow, had to grow on me. And there are a lot of things about it that I do like. Like I do like that it's a little bit of a harsher sounding album. And I do think that uh, the guitar work is definitely uh, what they wanted to write in regards to how the riffs were working in and those things, but it just felt like there was still some disjointedness. Like the band was still trying to find this identity that they were, that they had taken a step back from. Uh, so I also had this at an eight. Um, I definitely wanted to rank it lower, but when I went back and listened to a couple of other albums, it's like, no, I definitely <laughs> like this one a lot more than those. <laughs> so, but again, not to say that they're bad albums they are just in within this discography. I would much rather listen to this over several other ones. All right. Alan. Yeah, good points uh, about this one. This one does have, you know, some different sounds going on. I feel like, you know, uh, Vortex has reeled it in a little bit from, you know, his, his debut performance. It doesn't feel like, you know, he's, you know, trying to, you know, go quite as high as often. So he's reined in, you know, some of the, you know, the histrionics just a bit. The album, something we haven't mentioned, you know, the band is not above you know, using some kind of, you know, 70s sounding influences, uh, especially, you know, with some of, you know, the key or synthesizer work. And I feel like that's a little more prominent on this album, which gives it a little bit of that strangeness uh, that y'all have pointed out compared especially to the first three albums. There's some of it on the archaic cores, but, you know, it's definitely brought a little closer to the front here. I definitely agree with Jimmy on the front loaded pattern. Uh, I, there are some very good tracks on this one up front. Um, pulling up the track list here. Yeah, I really like Rivalry of Phantoms. You know, there's a lot of you know vocal stuff going on, but it's quite good. Presence is ominous. I really like, you know, Ruins of the Future, another good one. Even Colossus is good. But yeah, you know, as you get into the second half of the albums, they they, they definitely seem to sort of, you know, level out and coast across the finish line a little bit. Not and, and like Jimmy said, it's not that the material gets bad, it's just um, the strong tracks are up front they grab your attention uh, with the lead off numbers this is an album yeah it also took me a little while to get used to this one when it came out and i've been back and forth on this one over time you know when i first got it, it was like okay it's not that bad but i didn't love it and then i revisited it and was like no i don't think this is the album for me and then i revisited it and thought oh no actually this one is pretty good i didn't give it enough credit at first then i got rid of it <laughs> Then I ended up buying it again. So, uh, yeah, um, this this is an album on, you ask me at different times, and I rank it very, very differently. Uh, it's just, as someone else in the chat said, there are days I enjoy this album quite a bit, and there are days where it doesn't connect as well. As such, it's kind of averaged out in the middle. So far, Jimmy and Melanie have ranked it at number eight. I've got it ranked at number six, kind of dead center in their catalog. Yeah, and again... In a period when I like it, I'd push it up a notch. Periods where I don't like it, I'd probably push it down a notch or two. But um, 
uh, in terms of absolute grade, yeah, I'd still give it you know somewhere close to you know maybe the seven point eight eight. You know, it's still a good album overall. I don't mind it at all. Um, so yeah, something in the you know again that B minus kind of category would be about right for this one. Solid album, like it. Yeah, it has a few quirks that holds it back maybe, but um, not one that I mind overall. So yeah. When the worst thing about the album is, you know, the cover art, eh, music's probably going to be okay. So, Marty, uh, everyone's kind of hanging out here in the middle of the pack right now. What do you do with Quintessence? Well, I guess the it's notable to um, to mention Lars Nedland from Solifold on keyboards. He joins the band. He becomes very instrumental moving forward. There's a big change coming, and he... Is kind of at the the epicenter of this change to me anyway in my in my uh, um, view of it. Um, I think Quintessence is a very solid album, though sounding showing brief moments of creative fatigue. Um, synth accompaniment is no longer used for color; it's more of a constant element to the sonic canvas. The production on this is weird. I think that's a big problem with a lot of people. It it doesn't it doesn't sound like a, a studio abyss production to me it, if it is they went in and said we want to try to sound more live and they kind of made it sound kind of murky and muddy i don't know it's weird weird production um but for me the best song on the album is colossus i mean what a vocal performance holy crap the song is packed with inventive riffs and emotional tangents it's one of the best vortex era songs in my opinion um the presence is ominous uh, as a quirky and imaginative track I love the playful nature of the vocal melody lines in the verse. The Ruins of Future, well-written and powerful. Iconic Icon Dreams, a subdued though emotionally engaging track. The flow is infectious. And then you got the, the keyboard track, Inner Landscapes. I wrote down, we get it. Your parents made you make, take piano lessons. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And for me, this is number five in their list because... It's, you know, semen, it's a semen album. I, I think he takes some moments of creative stagnation and still pulls out some uh, unique, quirky traits out of the songs. I don't know. I think it's a good album. I think the production is the biggest, the biggest drawback for people. It's just so murky and weird sounding. But, yep, number five for me. Which brings us, Jimmy, to uh, a year later. Some changes happen in the band. In 2001, we have Empiricism. Oh, boy. So I think this is where things are going to take a turn in, ter in terms of our, <laughs> our similarities. Yep. I'm just guessing. I don't know. We'll see. Yep. Uh, so uh, another... Um, I guess I was kind of bummed, uh, definitely bummed to see Vortex. You know, Vortex goes on to the new Borger at this point full time. Bigger band. And, yep. And uh, He's so. He's got a mouth defeat at this point. So, yeah, yeah bigger band. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think he did great work with uh, Demu, but yeah. Um, yeah, it's neither here nor there. Uh, okay. So, I'm probably going to get the big red button when I say this, but I'm going to say it. And I don't know. Uh, I'm probably not going to get any agreement on this, but. Uh, I see a lot of similarities now for me. I see a lot of similarities of the Vintersorg era of Borknagar with the Daris era of ha Halloween. And the reason why I say that is because I see know, where you're going. I don't yeah. disagree with you. I don't disagree <laughs> with you. I see you're trying to get me pissed, but no, I get what you're saying. But I really mean it though. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, there was a lot of people that didn't like the Daris era of Halloween. And uh, let's be real, Daris has done some amazing work. With, he's, uh, done, uh, he's saved uh, the band. He's a great, he's awesome. People are sure. to say that are dumb. They get the, the red X yeah. of doom. <laughs> well, I think, uh, you know, for me and, and, and I'm just kind of using a loose analogy here, but uh, for me, I kind of credit, uh, you know, I kind of see, uh, you know, sort of a similar path here for Borknagar. I think Vintersorg did great work with the band. And uh, and I think that this is his finest moment with the band as well, uh, Empiricism. This is uh, also Who, a Who's finest theme. moment? I'm sorry, I was reading. Would you, who's uh, fine? Vintersorg. Okay. okay. Uh, and so, new singer, never heard of the guy. And um, 
picked the record up and another deeply nostalgic album for me. I remember where I was when I bought this. I was still living in New Orleans. I was working at a TV station in the French Quarter uh, a couple of years before I moved up to Colorado. I mean, I was getting up at four o'clock in the morning to shoot the morning news. And this was my companion to driving uh, to the French Quarter from, you know, the suburbs. And I just absolutely love this record. Um, I just, it's quite, this is really a new era for the band. You know, I mean, a lot of ways with quintessence being sort of a, you know, you could say it was an experimental album for the band. They really kind of went big on this one, made it really polished, really accessible. And uh, I think, I don't know if Vortex would have been good on this at all. I think Venersaur comes in. What? what? Really <laughs> the room is spinning. You're saying crazy things <laughs> right now. Anyway, go ahead. Continue on. Well, I, I, I don't think Vortex, w I mean, no, he probably would have been good on this, but I just feel like the songs are really suited to Vinosorg and his style. I mean, yeah. uh, because they're a little bit more straight. Yeah, it's a little more straightforward. It's a little bit more uh, in terms of the melodicism. It's it's uh, it's very earwormy, you know, and, and these things get stuck in my head. I mean, the Genuine Pulse, uh, Gods of My World, I mean, probably one of my favorite songs by Bork Nagar. I mean, I still get chills, uh, goose flesh when I hear that song. It's just, uh, Vinter Sorg, he's brilliant on this record. Absolutely brilliant, I think. And uh, from start to finish, I really love everything about it. It's the only track I don't really like is probably Inherit the Earth, which is kind of a little goofy. Um, there's just a lot of awesome, uh, awesome uh, melodies on this album. And uh, the drumming is really killer as as gear that the, the production is a little weird. Um, the drums are a little, um, I don't know, it's compressed sounding, but um, you know, very polished. I could see why people this would turn off because it, it is a lot more in an accessible realm uh, for the band. But um, yeah, I, again, I, I, uh, I think that uh, Vinter Sorg was a welcome addition. And uh, for me, I have not, uh, I never really got into his solo stuff. I didn't really, uh, just didn't really sit with me. A lot of ways, I feel like I need to like kind of go back to that stuff because he's got a whole discography himself. But um, I thought it was a great choice for the band uh, in terms of where they decided to go here. Now, whether they wrote the songs more towards his vocal, uh, I don't know. But uh, that's why I say Vortex probably would have been great on this, but it just feels to me like Vinter Sorg is really kind of the perfect singer for, for this album. And uh, I think this is my favorite Vinter Sorg record, and I will rank it at... This is number two for me in the discography. And, and again, a lot, a lot of reasons because this is a highly nostalgic album for me. And I remember where it was and it was just so, uh, such a, uh, a statement at the time, but what I was really into, you know, I like melody. I like, you know, things that stick in my head, the earworms, as I said, and this is chock full of that stuff. So love it. And uh, once again, the shitty, you know, I guess a little bit better artwork than, yeah, it's not good. But, Still not good. Yeah, it's not great. I mean, it, it's dated uh, to those late nineties, early two thousands uh, Photoshop kind of stuff. So, but, yeah, yeah. All right, Jimmy's number two. Melanie, where does this one sit with you? I agree. This is uh, his best album, uh, and I really, really enjoy this album. I like it's a little bit more of a cleaner sound, a little bit more better production, a lot more melody added to it. This is uh, when I came back to Borknagar and said, okay, I'm going to take you as who you are. And then they come in with a whole new singer and they change their shit up again. <laughs> uh, but I was, I was definitely in a better state of mind when I listened to this album. I was heavily into Prague and I was also a jazz guitarist and was really in, in playing in like a traveling jazz band and stuff like that. So, so this was a little bit more of an appreciation for me when I finally heard it, this album. So I have this at a number six. Um, I probably would have put it higher if it if it if the other albums I didn't love so much due to this nostalgia, because I do find myself listening to this a lot, um, and I do listen to it all the way through. Uh, it is a little bit interesting to know that this is I think is this their first album without an instrumental track on it though. There are mm. tracks that are heavily instrumental, but they have lyrics with them. Um, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, but. It's funny that Matter in Motion is like one of my favorite songs on this album. It's such a simple song. It's this, one of the, the shorter songs on the album. 
Love but that I song. find I find that I'm singing that and humming it after I listen to this album. So, yeah, I really like some. I think it's a six. Um, I, I really think you're gonna, you guys are going to skewer me for my my top three because we haven't touched those yet. So. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Alan has uh, reportedly been traded from Team Jimmy. I am a free. I'm a free agent at the uh, at the moment. <laughs> hey, I, I predict. I told you it was coming. So. L- looking for uh, looking for offers. Uh, you know, ut- utility infielder here, switch hitter. So uh, yeah, water boy can, can, can fill multiple roles. Uh, you know, vet- veteran presence in the locker room always appreciated. Yep. Mm. All right. So empiricism. Yeah. Uh, Vortex is out. Uh, Ventress works in this will become very apparent throughout the night. I haven't made it clear yet, but uh, I am very much a Vortex fan when it comes to Borknagar. Me too. Now, that said, I like Ventress Org also. Me too. And I'm fairly certain I was already familiar with Ventress Org's solo stuff before this album came out. I can't swear to it. The timeline there gets a little fuzzy. But I'm pretty sure I had at least one or two of his solo albums. Did you have <laughs> Cosmic Genesis? <laughs> I, I think I had, actually looking at the discography, I may have had all three of them, Ugh. including Co- Cosmic Genesis, Odin. I never liked that album. Not and good. Uh, whatever the third one, uh, Tilled Falls. So, yeah, I, I, I'm almost certain I knew that material before. Because I think when this was announced, I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, that could work. I'm very sad to see vortex phase out i thought he was you know really great in the band uh had enjoyed the previous two albums that we've talked about i was like okay this could work and there's nothing wrong with venture sorg's performance on here really like it just fine he's not somebody i go back to like those solo albums spoiler alert i don't go back to them ever these days i just i guess i played them enough or maybe played them a little bit too much so it's not a sound I go back to. Uh, things about the album itself, once again, it's kind of front-loaded. Uh, you know, Jimmy named some of the you know standout tracks. You've got you know, Gods of My uh, World, Genuine Pulse, great stuff. Productions cleaned up uh, compared to the previous album, so everything is sounding better. Something I noticed here with the Ventresorg material. It feels like Borknagar has definitely drifted away. You know, I mentioned before they had kind of this nice balance of you know cosmic vibe and a wintry vibe kind of mashed together and i think at this point they've kind of lost part of that equation it's still heavy now on the cosmic elements less so on the wintry stuff i just don't get that particular aura from agreed the music anymore yep. and i think that hurts a little bit yep. i liked when they had those two elements combined and swirled together now it's like, you know, yeah, they're sticking to just one theme and that makes it a bit less interesting for me. So certainly not a bad album, but I do rank it much lower than uh, either Jimmy or Melanie have. Uh, for me, this is kind of like a C plus type album. It's better than average, but it doesn't have much that draws me back to it other than the couple of tracks I mentioned before. And I've got this ranked down at number 10 uh, out of the 12. So again, I'm still saying above average. I mean, it's one of the lowest ranked and I'm still giving it a decent grade overall, but it's not one I go back to. Um, Playing it again this, you know, past couple of weeks since we decided on this topic, it's like, yeah, it's, it's all right. I certainly would never slag the album for any reason, but I'm not going to reach for it over a lot of the other Borknagar material. So 10, 10 feels about right for me here on this one. Marty, well, that, Alan, am, am, uh, am I getting traded to team? Uh, am I getting t- traded to Team Worm here? You picking team, up the team Worm. On the team Worm has a, a, a comfortable signing bonus, and it comes with a Bentley. You yeah. choose your color. You choose the right color. Here. <laughs> I'm driving now, bitches. <laughs> um, I guess well, I'm shooting commercials at this point. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like we'll a whole. We'll see you in the playoffs, Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm moving on to Progressive Insurance. Fine. <laughs> You know, this album came out and I hated it. I just hated it. And I didn't like the Vintersorg material. Um, and my buddy Austin from Panopticon, he's a big fan of this album. He's a big fan of this era of Borknagar. And I've always 
it seems like I circle around every couple years to to this era to see what's up. And this this these the next two albums are I listened to more than any of them in the batch because I wanted to get to the bottom of why I why this bothers me because all intents and purposes this is a good record. It really is. Mm-hmm. We'll just say that it isn't so much the um the Vortex or the um uh Vintersorg edition it's the the Lars uh what's his name the dude from Solifall the keyboard player what he he becomes you got a you got a problem with Nedland yeah he's got more of a he's got more of a voice on this it it and the hmm. album to me sounds it sounds like a different style it sounds like a band influenced by Borknagar doing different things um, you got a higher caliber of musicians here. You got this Ace Gear Mickelson and Tier, who was he was a touring bassist for Emperor for a while. He's a great bass player. Um, you you surround yourself with a higher caliber of musicians, and you end up creating more of sophisticated harmony and musical lines. Um, even some prog. Um, I'm not a fan of that. You start getting more sophisticated melodies and songs. I think it's impressive, but I just, it's, it's like to quote Tyler, it's wallpaper to me. It's like, there's nothing. I, if I have to really concentrate on something to figure it out or cause I, when I, I'm a very emotional mis- music listener, I, I get the goose bumps, you know, when it's a big emotional key changes, um, powerful, you know, progressions or an awesome vocal performance. This with a professional digital production, it's a very lifeless feel from start to finish on this to me. Uh, Vintersorg, I don't think he's a bad singer. I think he's a good singer. I think his grim vocals are passable. They get better as he goes. Um, his clean vocals have a frail quality to them that um, just, it, it isn't Vortex. I'm team Allen with this. I'm, I'm a big Vortex fan. That guy, he's got a ton of power and he has a creative vision when it, comes to placing um placing words over uh musical melody lines he's just great at it um i think Vintersorg does a good job at it but he's just always been kind of a little too frail for me um There's still, okay, more guitars. Yeah, the song Epic. More guitars in the mix, but still prog and keyboard dominant. More aggression vocally and musically, but songs still hard to follow. It's just it. There's way more prog in this. And, you know, Jimmy said he didn't think they really ever hit prog. They really started to get into it on this. And it's the the more um, uh, focal point on the keyboards, the synth work. I hate the piano sound, the, the fake piano sound. Oh my God. I mean, play a real piano, do a real piano. The fake chintzy Casio piano sound is absolutely terrible. And it's all over this record. It's all over it. And it's just, it adds a level of pretentiousness that I just have a hard time swallowing. And it, it isn't because the album is bad musically. It's very advanced, but that special quality, like Alan said, it just, it lost its wintry atmospheric vibe. There isn't a lot of atmosphere here. It's very sterile. It's the guitars, that interesting guitar work is in the background. The keyboards, the chintzy sounds are up front. Ah, This is number 11 for me. Number 11. Um, It isn't because it's a shitty album, because it's super talented. I just don't like it. I don't like it. It doesn't sound like the same band that started out. Evolution for a a long uh, legacy band is part of the game and it's funny because as a fan you're like oh you know like create bands like career i'm sick of them doing the same thing over and over and over a band tries something new like i don't like what they did it's like the goldilocks zone i mean this porridge is too cold this porridge is too hot oh this is just right it's never just right it's never just right and this is not right it's just not right for me but it sounds like a different band and that's where i'm at number 11 which leads us to three years later uh 2004's epic jimmy yep yeah that's interesting I, and i think um i think a lot of your criticisms are uh pretty valid i i would even go as far as to say as as much as i love empiricism i i agree i i 
it does tend to sound sterile. And I don't, I, I also, I, it was one thing I forgot to mention about, I love Lars Nedlin, but I don't like the keyboards that he's been using up to this point. I didn't like them on Quintessence. Um, they didn't seem as like uh, prevalent as maybe they were for you on Empiricism, but they get really annoying on this record uh, for Epic. And uh, it's also kind of interesting how we like sort of hear progressive stuff differently, like for, for Marty, because I know like you're not, you know, you're not really into like prog music and stuff. And I'm like into prog music to a certain extent. Like I don't go really crazy for prog, but I like, I probably like more prog than you do, for example. But it's, it, it is an interesting thing to hear about like how it sounded very like prog to you. Whereas like for me, it like just sounded like just memorable like earworms. You know what I mean? Like just just things that just and that's what I really liked about Vinter Sorg is that he just had those those hooks in the in those melodies that kind of and I, I think that at the end of the day is what I loved about empiricism so much. And they went on to kind of like take that sound uh really and 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 really do the same thing here with Epic. Um largely what they've done on Empiricism, just kind of a little bit tweaked. And I think this is a good record. I you know, again, it's 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 pretty much in the same direction as they're doing with the last one. It's stripped down to a four piece at this point. We've got uh, Nedland, uh, Oystein, Asgir, Asgir, and Vitrasorg. And uh, I yeah, I mean, I think some of these songs, especially like the first half of it, really kind of are are pretty much in the same vein of why I like empiricism so much is because of those again those earworms those. Uh, there's great melodies, those big epic melodies. Uh, it's too long. Uh, I mean, it's it's. Um, uh oh, <laughs> we may have lost you there, Jimmy. Jimmy's yeah, connection robot. just had an aneurysm. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give him a minute to. Uh... Get rebooted somebody, here. Oh, oh, somebody came in, kicked him off. Okay, are we good? No, you're good yeah, now. Yeah, now you're, you're, you're back. Yeah, you're you're back. Got, you, we missed the last couple of things you said there. You got a little bit, bit uh, robot y. Yep. That was you weird. Said, I think okay. you're saying it's too long, and then I think that's when it started to freak okay. out. Okay. Yeah, it's bloated. It's a bloated record. It's too long. I mean, it's, uh, and, and you know, Borg Nagar records tend to be pretty long for the most part, but I mean, this. It's 12 tracks. I mean, if they would have cut, like, there's probably three or four songs on here. If they would have cut, it probably would have been in the same vein of, uh, or, or the same, uh, you know, likability for me as Empiricism. I thought they did some, uh, there's some great songs on here for sure. And I think that's, uh, Venture Sorg is, is awesome on the ones that, uh, am I still here? No, you're good. You're yeah, here. You're good. You're good. <laughs> so um, just having fun. Yeah. You know, again, you know, you get the big epic uh start with future reminiscence and then uh traveler is kind of like the more radio friendly kind of song uh origin probably my favorite song of the whole record is just great great uh it's just great melodies man i, I just love i love bitter sorg on this shit i just do i don't know he just he just does it for me i do i like him better than vortex no but uh you know for this era of the band i think uh, again it's, it's working really well but yeah, it just starts to get kind of uh, kind of samey uh, toward the end of it. And at this point, as much as I loved empiricism, maybe that sound was kind of short lived for me um, because like I start to kind of burn out by the end of this record. Um, and then again, I mean, like you were talking about Marty, uh, I just don't like. I love uh, Lars Nedlin, as we're going to see, he's going to become a really huge uh, and integral part of the band. I mean, he's already pretty integral, but. I just don't like the, the the keyboard sounds that he uses on here. It's just the last album too. If it's uh, if his uh, synth tones were a little bit more curated and more authentic sounding, it might have had a better impact than this yeah. chintzy thin digital shit. You know, I don't know if it's something to do with like the time. Like it, it goes along with the artwork in a lot of ways. That it's sort of like dated. Time. Like you're kind of using like all these sure. you know goofy synth sounds that kind of like really different. Uh, you know. Uh, maybe they sound like different instruments in a way, but they really don't. You can tell it's a synthesizer. You can tell that it's uh, you know, they kind of just overpower the, the, the guitars in a lot of ways. So, well, it's um, 2004 digital, digital recording has come a long way in 20 years. Right. I, I like, 
I like to think that they felt like they were really on top of something with empiricism. I oh, think yeah. they were really, I think they were really proud of that record. And I think they really tried to up the game on that with Epic, you know, it's called Epic. Come on. You know I mean? It's supposed to be kind of, I don't know. It's just, I still really dig this record. I think it's really good. I, again, um, first four or five tracks, really first six tracks are just, just good, well-written uh, Burton cartoons, but it still kind of ranks fairly low for me at number nine. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, again, I'm starting to kind of burn out at this point. So, right on. All right, Melanie. Epic. Yeah, this is my least favorite Bork Nagar album. I had this ranked at 12. And it's not because I think it's a terrible album by any means, but it's just a boring album for me. Like, they didn't really. Again, they keep doing this thing where you want, you know, that they want to start to push boundaries and do things a little bit different and have a more different sound than their last albums. And then they, they tend to try too much here. I do think eventually they finally get it and you'll see, you'll understand what I mean by that when you find out my first, my favorite albums. But yeah, this album is just really boring. In fact, I actually forgot about it. Not gonna lie, <laughs> when I started to go back and listen to their discography, when um, in the recent years, I was like, "Oh, that's right, that album did come out." Um, also, it came out in 2004. And I think about where I was as a metalhead in 2004. I was pretty much not listening to new albums because it was such a shitty year, in my opinion. Like Lamb of God was the popular metal band, and I absolutely do not like that band. Pantera was was pretty much dead, but then they had Damage Plan that was being released, and all those guys were going and making new bands, and so people were just amping that up, and like just I think that it was a really terrible year for metal. So I think this got lost in the shuffle with that, unfortunately. I think the time the time frame of this album uh, just was not a good era uh, to be releasing metal music. So I think that has a lot to do with why I think that way. Um, so yeah, it's my least favorite. Uh, Borknagar album, um, which says a lot because I know there are some other ones that I understand why people don't like them a lot more, but for this one, it just never really did it for me. But it's, again, it's not a terrible album, just not I probably will never listen to it after we are done with this stream. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, Alan. Represent Team Marty well. I think we may all be kind of on the same team with this album. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this one... Uh, like Jimmy was saying, you know, th this is where I got burned out. You know, in empiricism, I had tried really hard, and you know, it had you know a few songs when I liked. After this album, I lost track of the band. I was not interested anymore. Um, I hadn't thought about it in terms of yeah, 2004 was. I kind of wasn't listening to much new stuff after that either. I was paying more attention to older music was part of it, but um, yeah, so this kind of stuff coming out in 2004 certainly didn't make me want to keep listening to. Uh, some of the bands that were currently active either that said you know um it is not an awful album nobody sounds horrible here but to me it's just it's just kind of there you know it's a c album for me it's not bad in any particular way but it's not good in any particular way at any it's just average which in some ways is almost worse than being an f you know in a way an f album you at least had an emotional reaction yeah. to not a positive one, but, you know, it made you feel things. The albums I rank C are ones, you know, kind of like Melanie said, I never revisit them. I never really want to revisit them. I play it, say, yeah, okay, it's an album. You, 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 you made an album. Good for you. It's neither good nor bad. I, I, there's nothing that pushes me one way or the other, and that's just kind of where it ends. So yeah, this was the last Bortnagar album I checked out for a extremely long time. Um, yeah, I just figured, you know, okay, the band has done its thing and I'm just not interested anymore. And again, it's nothing against Ventresorg. Um, I think he's, you know, all right, pretty good as a vocalist, but it, it, the material they're doing, you know, in this phase is just not working for me. I ranked this 11 out of 12. Um, it could easily have been 12 but um, we'll get to 12 eventually. So yeah, number 11 for me, we're all down here uh, at the bottom of the ranking. Marty, be staying on the team with the rest of us. Yeah, I, I, I threw my paper away. The Epic, I read it on the last one, but more guitars in the mix, but still prog and keyboard dominant, more aggression vocally and musically, but songs still hard to follow because of the, I don't know, 
to me it's it's number 10 it's a step better it's a step up from empiricism and um again good albums just not my bag just not my bag which brings us to two years later 2006 we have origin jimmy <clears throat> Yeah, um, as everybody's kind of talking about at this time, uh, just just kind of burnt out. I was definitely burnt out with Bork Nagar at this point. Um, you know, 2004, it was an interesting time for me. This is the year. Uh, well, no, this is what? What year is 2006. this? 2006. Okay, so 2004 was uh, epic. That was the year I moved to Colorado. Uh, so still, even though I that was one thing I didn't mention, uh, was burning out, but still kind of somewhat nostalgic, was into it, and then was kind of like, well, they're kind of burning out on this style pretty quickly, you know? And uh, so they just go and pull a complete 180 and do a, you know, neo-folk acoustic record, which I remember when they announced this, I was like, wow, that's cool. You know, I, I was a fan of Opeth's Damnation. I thought uh, this could be uh, an interesting one-off for them, maybe something a little bit different. Uh, but I found pretty quickly that uh, it just wasn't doing it for me. I don't know. And uh, it's, it just felt to me like they were doing just that. They were pulling a damnation. They were like, let's do, let's shake it up. I mean, things are kind of burning out. Let's, uh, let's, let's pull out a neo folk record and see how that goes. And unfortunately, like it could have been really good, uh, but it just feels like rather than be inspired to do a record like this, they made the decision to do it and then said, let's see what we can do with it. And this is, was the result of it, which is why, you know, they did a cover of uh, Ocean's Rise, which is cool. And it's a good, nice little rendition of the song. You know, one of my favorite Fort Nagar songs with Vinter Sword. Not, not quite near on the level of the original. But yeah, man, I mean, that's just what it felt like to me. It just felt like they, they, they wanted to shake it up. Let's do something different, and this is the result. And it just didn't really pan out quite as much, you know, what maybe it did for them, but it didn't for me, for sure. I, I don't know. I just, I didn't like it. I mean, I didn't hate it. I just was like, yeah, whatever, and I kind of just moved away from it. I think I listened to it like once or twice. And uh, to prepare for this, I hadn't listened to it since. I think I picked up the CD for like five bucks just to com get close to completing my collection and went back to it. You know, this was like three years ago and still wasn't really quite feeling it. And then ultimately preparing for this stream, I listened to it twice earlier in the week. And it just, I'm thinking like I got to connect with this record in some way because I love, uh, you know, neo-folk music and uh, just, uh, you know, I, I need I need softer music to balance all the metal a lot, you mm -hmm. know, a lot of times for sure. And uh, what better band to do that than Borknagar? But it just didn't land for me. I don't know. It just didn't. Uh, there. I mean, I would. I was expecting this to be full of the earworms, and it just wasn't. Uh, it just felt dull and uninspired. And uh, you know, the musicianship is there. A lot of the different sounds they're using, but it's uh, it's kind of just uh, run by the numbers. Let's do something different, and kind of didn't pan out for me. So. Yeah, it's too. It's kind of unfortunate. I, I don't really have too much to say about it because every time I've listened to it, it just kind of went by, and there was nothing that really jumped out on me for me, you know. And uh, other than the Ocean's Rise cover, so I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe uh, I'm curious to see what you guys think. But uh, this ranked uh, dead last for me at number twelve. All right, Melanie. I gave this a number eleven, and that is because sometimes. I think about how this should have been their unplugged Eric Clapton album <laughs> and that that's what they were trying to do with it. Um, so I tried to give them a little bit of a benefit of a doubt there. And I do like folky music. Like that tends to be something I absolutely love when bands put into their, to their uh, albums. Uh, so I listened to it again the last couple of weeks and it, it wasn't awful Definitely not something I will ever listen to on repeat. But some of the songs were catchy. Some of the songs I, I liked. Some of it reminded me a little bit of, of Bathory when when uh, they try to put those clean vocally sounds into like Hammerheart and, and all those other Viking albums. Just a little bit. Every touch of it here and there kind of reminded me of that. 
but still not the i don't oh i don't really why did they release this album like <laughs> jeff i think you said you're gonna have one of the guys on your stream ask them <laughs> well because uh, someone is completely right in the chat they said because opeth opeth we're here. Basically a cash grab thanks to the Opeth album, Damnation. Yeah, like I said, Damnation. Damnation. Yeah. yeah, but Opeth had more of a standing with this kind of a music, though, I guess. Yeah. That cleaner. Well, and they were probably, I mean, inspired to do Damnation, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, it just came out, whereas this was like, let's do a Damnation, and this is it, you know? Yeah. yeah, this is just one of those albums where I thought to myself, okay, either they were just done and they just wanted to do something completely different, which just probably was the case, or they were trying to test the waters here <laughs> and see uh, what they could get out of it. But uh, somebody mentioned a cash grab. Did it? I wonder, I should go back and look and see how well it did in terms of sales. It probably did pretty well uh, in Europe those countries over there just because Borknagar is so big over there. But yeah, I don't know. It's not a terrible album by any means. So it just doesn't fit the mold really. Have they um, ever toured the U.S.? Borknagar? A couple times. Really? Yeah. I well, they, no they, were, they were on the, uh, they were on the Emperor tour around Archaic Course or Quintessence, I think. Oh, okay. When Emperor came mm. over here and yeah, they came over recently too. Um, we'll get mm. to that. Yeah, so I have a set 11. I don't really have much to say about it because I, I listened to it once while I was doing this deep dive the last two weeks and then just was like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I never bought this album. <laughs> that was my my take. All right. Alan. Yeah, I think Joshua put it really good in the comments. Sounded like a good idea on paper. I, I, Portnagor trying to do something you know more acoustic like this. Okay. Um yeah, it kind of makes sense, you know, given their, you know, influences and their capabilities. But the execution's just not there. I, I mean, when the most interesting song on the album is the acoustic version of your own previous song from like four albums ago, yeah, that's uh, that's a problem. That said, there's nothing bad about the album. It's not it's like it's offensive to listen to or anything. It's just... Uh, I think Marty, you've used the phrase earlier tonight. It's just wallpaper. You put it on, it's music in the background while you're typing or doing dishes or doing something that you have to focus on enough that you don't really listen to the music. Because the music's, if you stop and listen to it, there's just nothing interesting going on there. Um, I too am very glad I never bought this album. I would not have enjoyed it at the time. Um, I'd still give it like, you know, maybe a C, C minus kind of grade. It's not terrible but uh, it, it's definitely my number 12 um i doubt i ever revisit this album again unless it's just to kind of maybe someday you know it pops up in the youtube feed and like well i'm grading papers for three hours why not <laughs> but uh, yeah <laughs> I, I guess you know the, perfect the games that... <laughs> norwegian <laughs> starbucks music <laughs> <laughs> very well said yeah, it says, and I guess you know if you know the thing that you know, maybe bugs me about a bit. Again, it seems like they could have done something interesting in this style, and they just didn't manage to deliver something that it feels like they would have been capable of. So, um, yeah, don't know why it didn't quite uh, come together better, but it didn't. So, number twelve for me, Marty. Keep the let's keep the uh, let's keep the band together here. We're all we all on the same page. Hat trick. I'll go with twelve as well. Um, there you go. This is one of those albums, and that part of the point in a band's uh, discography. Uh, Jimmy says you think they're just trying. I think that they were really into this. I, I have a feeling that this was a very important release to the band, especially the key. I can't ever remember his name. The keyboard player. What the hell is his name? Lars. Lars. Um, there's a lot of symphonic elements to this record it's beautiful there's flutes on it i, I mean like the yeah. flute touches it does liven mm -hmm. it up a little bit i'll uh, give it that two years yeah. between albums produces a pretentious acoustic album it's pretentious talented sure something i ever want to listen to never never um uh, i you know what this is one of those records i bet if it was a hit we would have heard a lot more of this in bork nagar's mix I, mm. I i just have that feeling Oceans Rise from our archaic course is unnecessary and makes me want to hate the original. 
<laughs> Come on. You take a great song and you, you know, turn it into a crappy song. I don't know. Um, every musician in this type of mindset, you get surrounded by really elevated musician types. It seems they just want to attempt to be more arty and mature and highbrow than their contemporaries. And that's what this record feels like to me. I think it's gross. I don't think it fits. This if the this is the porridge is too cold type shit for me. Nope. Um, Goldie don't like this. Goldie don't play that game. This is a number twelve. Don't like it. it <laughs> they have definitely traded in all their pets for hairless cats at this point. Yep, yep. They got some nice sweaters. <laughs> they got a new new uh, fancy new bottle of Sater's Wong Ravens wine. Um, they're gonna swirl it around and talk about the bouquet. And anyway, <laughs> uh, Jimmy. We're going into 2010 with Universal, which is an album we covered on the Album Club. I don't Tell us about I Universal about. while I sit and stroke Manx. <laughs> we stroke Satan. Yeah, this is the only one I don't have a physical of. And uh, again, you know, at this time, pretty burnt out with Bork Nagar. Uh, what year is this? 2010. 2010. <clears throat> Well, I mean, at this time, uh, a lot of other good, great shit coming out, um, but it just, yeah, man. I mean, like, I was excited to hear that they were going back to a big, you know, proper full-length uh, Bork Nagara record. Uh, we've got a new drummer in the fold, Dave Kincaid, who uh, was kind of an oddball choice for the band. Uh, he is an American who has done, uh, he was kind of more of a session drummer kind of guy. I think he did, he was like in Soulfly, I think, and... Uh, I don't even, I know he was in a couple of death metal bands, but um, yeah, it was just kind of like this weird choice for them. And they're still, you know, and we also should, should mention um, because it hasn't been mentioned yet. Uh, let's see if I could find it. It would be the, uh, the, uh, the rhythm guitarist, Jens Ryland, who's actually been, you know, a pretty prominent member of the band. And I think this is the last record. Yep. Uh, this is also the return of, of tear uh, Eric for uh, the uh, former Emperor live bassist uh, is back in the band here. I think, yeah, no, I, I don't know if he was on the origin record, but so no, we've got a yeah, little bit of the new bassist here too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So we've got a little bit more expanded lineup at this point to see where, uh, you know, so I checked in and uh, listened to the album and uh, yeah, I mean, it's got all the elements there. I mean, it's, it's definitely a Vinta Sorg era, Bork Nagar record, but it just, uh, for me, uh, it's, you know, the, the fire that burns with this band usually, unfortunately, you know, the, the wood pile was kind of, kind of damp on this one and <laughs> did not quite ignite, you yeah. know, it just did not ignite. It smolders. Uh, it mm -hmm. smolders quite a bit here. You know, I mean, it, look, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's well produced. Uh, it sounds a little bit more uh, modern, you know, Bort Nagar, where they're going to go from here, but it just, um, you know, it's pretty typical and it's, it's definitely just burning out for me again. You know, it's not, uh, there's no earworms uh, like the, that I want to hear. There's no, nothing is sticking for me, you know, and uh, even like as much as Epic was kind of lower in the scale, man, there was quite a few songs in there that still really wrapped, you know, wrapped around me pretty hard. And uh, this one, I couldn't really think of one. And, and it's funny because we start to see at this point, Vortex slowly start to, you know, inch his way back into the band. And he actually does a song on here called My Domain. And even that song, well, pretty good. It just doesn't uh, quite save the record for me, you know. Um, I don't know. It just was a very, very ho-hum Bort Nagar record. And I think at the time I listened to it once and it was like, I'm still burnt out on these guys. I think... I think they're kind of done for me at this point and uh it's very low to say for me but they just haven't really done it in a while so i just i, I didn't really give it any more time and getting ready for this deep dive i listened to it two or three more times and try to see if i could connect with it again because you know i'm i'm very much a team venusaur guy and uh it's still this week i, I even listened to it today um uh, the last record to prep for this and uh it just did not did not land for me once again. So kind of sad, but um, you know, they've got a pretty mid lull period here and uh, 
So as a result, this one is uh, not quite dead last, but number 11 for me. Cool cover art, though. Yes. Yeah, uh, big step up. Big step up. last three or four records. They actually paid <laughs> yep. an artist instead of a designer. All right. Melanie. So this album, I, I go back and forth between this and, and their next one. Uh, they're pretty much neck and neck in terms of how much I like them within discography. It's not terrible, but there's something about Borknagar in this period where it's just like they want to get to somewhere in their style of music and it still seems like they're holding back from what they actually want to play, um, which we'll get to that. <laughs> um, and for me, that kind of killed this album just a little bit. There are parts where a little bit stale, some blend together a little bit. And there are songs that stand out a little bit more. Um, but again, similar to Jimmy, it doesn't really do much for me, even after listening to this. Actually, another album I forgot that they released, and that's probably because it's not on streaming platforms and it's on a different label that's not on Century Media. Uh, so it's pretty hard to find in that regard. So that might be why. It's just I'm not as familiar with it. But yeah, I have this at 10. I, I, I have it slightly more than Epic in Origin, just because there are moments on it that I'm like, okay, you're, you're getting there. You're going to do like, you're going to do what I think you guys are trying to get to the proggy elements are starting to come in play. There's a little bit more of a jazzier style of bass playing in here that you start to hear. And those, those things are there, but it just isn't quite getting there for me. So yeah, number 10 for me. Uh, again, these next two albums we talk about are, are pretty much the same. What's up, Ken? How you doing, man? Hope you're doing good. All right, Alan, Universal. Yeah, but, um, we're, we're all pretty much on the, the same page still with this one. Um, I do think they're improving here. They're kind of getting out of this NUI that they've got into. Um, there's not many standout tracks on this album for me, but the album overall at least you know feels like it's moving in the right direction. There are some you know, little things here and there that crop up there that I don't like, like... Um, you know, on 4,000 years to come, there's kind of a weird vocal processing effect. I'm like, really? You don't need that. You've got a very good vocalist. I, it always bugs me when the band's got a very, you know, good vocalist and then they start messing with their voice. It's like, no, don't, don't do that. That's, uh, that's going in the wrong direction. Uh, this album also still kind of, it lacks atmosphere once again, something that was a big part of the band sound early on. This album doesn't, feel wintry and it doesn't feel that cosmic either so they've kind of lost a lot of both of those components and, and again i think those were important parts of their identity and their sound for a long time spoiler alert they're going to get some of that back we're, we're, we'll get there um still overall um there are things i like about the album it feels like um this one uh kind of glancing over my notes here sorry um, this one feels like it's got some space to it. You know, that the songs, uh, you know, they're not trying to do too much stuff at once. And so, yeah, they have some room to operate in the songs. So I, I can appreciate that. So yeah, I don't, you know, dislike the album. This is probably like, again, C plus type material. Maybe it's, I'll give it a little better than average. Um, in terms of a ranking, this one is ninth um, for me. Uh, so, yes. And so, yeah, again, it, it shows up here. I'm just, I'm not team Ventresorg when it comes to Portnagar. We've done four Ventresorg albums, and for me, they've been uh, 10th, 11th, 12th, and now 9th. So I've got this actually as the best of the, you know, Ventresorg at the helm albums. But, um yeah, not a bad album. This is one I would, you know, circle back to maybe at some point and give it a little more of a chance because it, it, it's not a bad album, but it, it doesn't have any big marquee songs that are going to draw me back immediately either. So, Marty, it's uh, your turn to chime in on Universal. What do you think of it? Um, Again, we win an hour plus on this album over at the Album Club. Um. The album holds up a little bit better for me than the rest leading up to this. It feels like a band 
trying to get back on track, to be honest. Um, production feels a bit more organic. Uh, the guitar more guitars up front coexist better with symphonic moments. Vinersorg's clean style is beginning to feel more like it belongs in Borknagar. I know that's a ridiculous statement, but I'm team Vortex all day, 100%. Um, it's still a bit too proggy for my taste, but the band sounds like themselves more, and I like it. This is one, if I found it used bin, I would buy it. I don't own it, but I don't dislike it. Um, Havoc for a thousand years to come and abrasion tide are all standout tracks for me on this one, which, um, leads us to two years later. Oh, I'm sorry, Marty. Where did you rank this one? Oh, I'm I sorry. Number nine, number nine. Okay. Nope. No, I missed it while I was typing. Yep. Number nine. Yep. Mind I didn't it. say it. Yep. Number nine, which leads us to 2012's Erd. Jimmy. Yeah, uh, for me, this is the comeback. Oh, this dude, is, this album rules. It's this so is good. the ultimate fucking comeback and would inform where they would go from here, in my opinion. I mean, yeah. uh, fucking great. I love this record oh, so much. So good. And I was late to it, too, because I was off the train for a while. And this is 2012, right? So it might have been like a year since it was released. I was like, shit, they got a new record out. I wasn't even paying attention. And much to my own uh, amusements, that Vortex was a little bit further back in the fold. Now he's actually a member of the band at this point yep. and doing bass. And this is interesting because now we've got a lot of cooks in the kitchen, right? As you would say. Yes. <laughs> uh, because this is also, um, you know, showcasing Lars as a bigger part of the band. You know, I mean, I know he had done some backing vocals, but he, I don't think he had ever really done any uh, any vocals like, you know, as the leading vocalist for any tracks for the previous records, even though he's been in the band for a while. And if you if you know the band Solo Fog, which I love, uh, you know that this guy's got a great vocal style as well that really suits Bortnagar and uh, is a little bit different. But it's interesting to hear all the vocalists together because they're all quite different, yet they all have something to say for the band, for me. And this was a fucking amazing comeback. Uh, I mean, uh, it's it's a long record. It's a long listen. But I still doesn't feel, feel long to me anyway. Oops. For Maybe a lot of me. records at this point, it, it's you know it, it does feel like most records as usual. It, it and it is front loaded. But man, the second half is is pretty great as well. Um, so we go down the line. I mean, you got your. I mean, this is where it always starts. You know, you got the. The opening track, which is the big epic song with a bunch of different vocalists singing, you know, it's got some blast beats. It's got a lot of variation to it. You know, you go into Roots, which is a little bit more subdued, kind of like the, the radio track. And then you get to the beauty of the Dead Cities, which is like, uh, here's Vortex again. He's back big time on this one. Oh, and that's such a, a great song. So good. And, and it's and it's Vortex. And this is the big one where uh, Lars is singing and he's doing, uh, you know, uh, the refrain or whatever it is, but you really get to start to hear his, you know, his, his, it's like those two guys are slowly inching their way into like being, you know, very much in the front. And I, you know, I got to say, I got to hand it to Vintasorg a, a bit because he's great on this. I love all the Vintasorg stuff on this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they all balance together very well. Um, and their parts make sense. And Vintasorg is still kind of dominant as the vocalist in here. But, uh, you know, you're hearing those other two guys coming in a lot more. And to me, I love that because I love the variation in that. I love all of them. They all sound you know, very similar, though. Yeah, they the do. Core, they really do. They It's almost it could be the same singer, really. It's like they're, it's like they're similar but different. I don't yeah. know. And, I, and that's there's a quality there that I really, really dig that because of that, because I can't figure out whether, you know, like I, I have to really like pay attention to to. Like if I'm listening to this in the background, I I'm not really paying attention. I, I wouldn't be able to tell you who's singing. But then if I really sit down and listen to it and really just immerse myself, man, I can really make out who's who. And it's like, wow, they really did a great job on picking, you know, the parts for who who would be singing. Uh, but I like the Halloween a, thing. Three singers. Come on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there it is. I was <laughs> waiting. I was waiting okay. for you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that, uh, but I'm not I'm not quite there yet. We're gonna get there, but um, who who played? Okay, so this is still Osgear uh, on drums, but is it? No, this is oh Dave Kincaid played on this. I didn't know that. I thought he was only on that last record. 
Well, man, it's a it's just it's a big production. They got Jens Bogren doing the doing the the mixing and the mastering, and you know, come on, the guy does a great job. He just makes everything sound good, really bright, really loud. Uh, everything is just you know, all the instruments shine, and uh, it's just a lot of variation, big, big, epic, epic moments. And like you know, one of the things that Alan was was playing about, I think, is back. The atmosphere is back. I feel mm-hmm. on this one, hundred percent, especially with Frostrite, man. What a fucking oh you know, my brilliant, god, brilliant! I mean, this is I like listened to that the, song five times today, by the way. Yeah. I, it's like one of those vortex moments that just, I mean, fucking just gets in your the I mean, best just, song on the album. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I have so much to it. Uh, I mean, just every song here is is great. Um, wow, uh, I I'm back in, you know, back in big time, and I'm just so excited for the future of the band. Uh, but uh, Erd falls in at number six for me, which is again, this is really this is where it really gets hard to to rank for me. But uh, saying it's number six. Could be number one at any day. Uh, awesome, amazing record. Love it. Right on. Melody. Oh, and real quick, oh, real yeah. quick. Uh, uh, the Earthling. I, I I glossed over that one. I fucking That's love a good that song, song too. Yeah. And uh, you know, I mean, if you're the Earthling, I'm not quite sure if you're the Weaver of the Sun, but I'll give it to him. Fine. You know, if, if you would have said I was Norwegian, I'm the Weaver of the Sun. Fine. I would have gone for that. You know, if you're just an Earthling. I don't see any other things weaving the sun. And anyway, it, it is what it is. Neither here nor there. Great. I'll give him that. So right there you go. <laughs> All right. Melanie. So this was my favorite, one of my favorite Borkenegger albums until other ones came out. Um, I agree. It's a great album. They're starting to go back into form. I like the overall production of this, the more progger elements that they're adding to it. I feel like there was a saying that there, like you can smell the old Norwegian Viking like wood with this album. And that's definitely the theme in the atmosphere of this album that I really, really enjoy. Oh, um, it, so, so, sorry, Melanie. That That's me. My, my bad. <laughs> yeah, I swear somebody from the band said that like, and they all like, there was some sort of a weird, like a uh, saying that I read when I was reading about the background of this album. Uh, yeah, I really like it. I would have had this higher if I didn't have so much uh, personal nostalgia for some of the other albums that I ranked for fairly high, like Archaic Course and Old and Domain. Um, so I do have this at nine, but I feel like that's still relatively low. Um, and that's just because I probably haven't listened to this nearly as much as I should. Because again, I was kind of like, what is this band doing? Like, <laughs> Just find an identity and stick with it, you know? Because they did really kind of go all over the place within their discography for that. Um, so now that I've gone back and listened to it a, a little bit more, this will probably be higher if we do this in a year from now. I'll probably have more of a greater appreciation for it. Uh, but yeah, it is a good album. It's not bad. And I would definitely listen to it a lot more now that I've, I've dove further into it. All right. Alan. Yeah, I'm- agree with folks we're all kind of still on the same page here this is definitely the album where they kind of find their groove again and it's interesting because yes you know they've got both vocalists on board which could go wrong but they navigate it quite well so they they're both good vocalists and they are able to play off of each other and work well together on the track so yeah it, it clicks and yes, Jimmy, they get the atmospheres back here. And that is an important component. It keeps it more interesting. Uh, like Melanie, this is not one I've played a ton. Uh, this is one of those moments where I kind of checked in on the band. It's like, oh, okay, that's interesting. But I didn't actually buy the album. And so I just kind of you know, heard it a couple of times. And then it slipped out of mind. It was one of those... You know, there's that uh, Simpsons meme where they, you know, come in and, you know, somebody like runs into the Vatican and tells the Pope something. And he says, sir, for a second, he's like, hmm, keep an eye on it. And then they immediately just, you know, move on to other stuff. And that's kind of what happened to me with that. I was like, oh, that's interesting. I wish I should keep an eye on that. And uh, I didn't do so. So my bad. But yeah, the a good album, it gets them back on track. Uh, which is kind of the main thing at this point. After you've kind of gone through this, you know, a little bit of a lull. And to be fair, the band was 
maybe still doing okay in a broad sense during those albums. They kept putting them out. Somebody was buying them. <laughs> but um, this one does feel like it's more of a return to form for sure. I agree. It's also kind of a hard one to nail down where to rank it at. And it's one of the albums I bounced around several times over the past 10 days while I was trying to really nail numbers down on these. I ended up putting it at five, which feels a little high. Um, it will probably wouldn't might shift down a notch or two as I get more familiar with some other albums. But um, yeah, I, I'm comfortable with five in terms of like a letter grade. This one feels like a good solid B to me. Um, there, there's really nothing to complain about. It's a good album. Um, it maybe yeah, it just doesn't, you know, at this point, you know, maybe I'm not deeply immersed in it enough to elevate it up, you know, into those higher rankings. But, you know, a good solid, you know, seven and a half, eight out of tens, nothing to be uh, ashamed of whatsoever. Good album. Bands back on the map. Can only get better from here, right? I guess we'll see. But, uh, Marty, what are your thoughts on Erd? You, you seem pretty excited about this one so far. This album came out. It blew me away. It still blows me away. Mainly because of the song Frost, right? But we'll get to that. Um, Vortex returns and compliments Ventrasorg and Lars perfectly. Um, their vocals unite seamlessly, and it's great to hear Siemens atypical and vibrant vocal melodies back in the band. Synth is in the background where it belongs, allowing Oisin and Jen's uh, unique guitar lines to rise atop the sonic forest canopy. Again, the forest canopy. There's that atmosphere. It's coming back. It feels more earthy more woodsy more wintry i guess you could say frost right maybe one of the best norwegian songs ever it is for me um vortex track uh sounds like it could have been on his amazing solo album which is um, worth pointing out here um 2011 the year before this came out he put out his solo album storm seeker this album rules from song from beginning to end i mean if you want Un, unleashed unrestricted uh ics vortex here it is and he goes from everything to the black metal to the um carpenters influence i know it was like carpenters there's a playful 70s rock vibe to his uh on windward the song windward in particularly it's just a free vocal line that just pulls at my heartstrings man this is an awesome, awesome, awesome. I wish he'd do more, but here we go. 11 tracks of Vortex doing his own band. He's got a bunch of talented dudes in the Norwegian scene surrounding him on this. And then he enters into Borknagar again. Man, I just, I really love this album. I thought they did a really great job. All the singers, I mean, Vintersorg, all the things that might have bugged me in the past don't bug me anymore. Lars is stepping up to be a great, I mean, he was good in Soul of Fall. I like some of that stuff. I don't love it, but I like it. Um, and then Vortex back is the icing on the cake. You just cannot beat in that Frostrite song. It's one of the, the first time I got that album, I listened to that song probably 10 times in a row. And today, my wife and I had to take her on some stuff today and or listen to this album. And I kept skipping back she's like you like this song i'm like yeah we listened to it like four times it's so good you know you poorly try to sing along with it it's just great 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 song um so yeah standout tracks for me frost right um apocalypse um the beauty of dead cities earthling all of it is great it's a long album but it doesn't feel long i got the record this is the only borknagar vinyl i own is this one and uh there's a metallica cover on it and it's unnecessary. It kind of fucks up the record for me. Nah, that, that was, that was, uh, uh, a bonus that I didn't need. Um, surprisingly, where do you guys think I'm putting this one? You've talked it up number quite two. a bit. You have your number two, two slots open. It's my number two, which okay. is odd to say all the classics that we've just blown through. This is my number two. This it's that strong. Jamie, I'm with you. This is a very strong album. It's an amazing comeback. It's a band that righted the ship. They got all the tools in their shed now that they can build a house with. And they built a fucking mansion with this one. I love it. And um, which uh, brings us to four more years. Winter Thrice comes out. Jimmy. 
<clears throat> Bray back. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what what it was that uh, brought them back so hard. Um, you know, after kind of such a mid period lull. Even though uh, some of the mid period lull is still great, as we've talked about, but uh, Winter of Thrice, man. Oh, fuck, I love this record, man. I just love it, man. And I think that after such a strong record with Erd, uh, I, they are obviously on fire and uh, and also probably one of the best cover arts that they've done in a while. But um, so they're continuing in the same vein as Erd and uh, have got this amazing songwriting streak to me. And they bring a uh, guard back. And so I think I saw a lot of criticism, you know, that there was way too much going on in terms of like, you know, now you got four vocalists. That's right, Tyler, you got Bard, uh, an amazing drummer. I think this is the only record he did with them. And that's the, it, yeah. Yeah. The Leprous guy, uh, the Leprous guy, um, who, uh, you know, just, just an insane, insane drummer, probably one of the best drummers they've had up to this point. But, um, you know, uh, very similar in terms of the, the Borknagar template. You know, you come right out with the Rhymes of the Mountain, big epic track, everybody singing, blast beats, uh, just a lot of variation. And then we get to the title track, Winter Thrice, which I found uh, there was a bit of criticism about because now we've got mm -hmm. Garm back. And Melanie, you were talking about like how, like, you know, it's funny how like music videos, we don't really pay attention to these days or they usually kind of mm -hmm. suck. This is like one music video that like really fucking did it for me. Um, and where a lot of people saw that, uh, you know, maybe this was like, it was just too much. I saw that this was a great, great moment for the band. You know, it, it, this is, this is a celebration of the band for me, this record and having all the vocalists and, and you're talking about all the greatest vocalists that have come out of Norway. You've got all four of them on here. And uh, and I think that the way that they constructed the title track for this is really just was perfect. And a lot of ways, like we were, and we're going to get to the new record, you know, we were talking about the anthem, but Winter Thrice to me is very much like, you know, the, you know, it, it is as well, the Bork Nagar fight song, you know, the, you know, the, the, the anthemic Bork Nagar song, you know, the, the video, they're all sitting in that cabin and they're all just like doing their parts and it's, you know, on one hand, you might think it's cheesy, but to me, it spoke really, really hard, and it was the atmosphere. And uh, again, a really just a watershed moment for the band. You know, with all the different eras, everything culminates right here to this record. You know, and uh, I think this just—it's—it's it's just bursting with the earworms that I want to hear out of the band. And as we get uh, to the later albums here, I mean, I think the band is doing the best work they've ever done. And, uh, and this is a big statement for me. Uh, so many great tracks. I love all the Garm contributions here. I think uh, Terminus, he's great. Uh, there's just a lot of variation, a lot of uh, just really well thought out songs, well written. I mean, goddamn, every it just sounds so good. Man, what, there's that, uh, you know, going back to the drumming, that, that fucking fill that he does on i don't know if it's cold runs the river or panorama but man it's just like one of those drum fills that's like it's like a neil Peart drum fill that like i wonder how you could be able to get that right every time if you were going to play it live but um and also man kudos to fucking lars nedlin because he really shines as everybody does you know but he really really comes out as he's been coming out on erd i mean he's becoming a, a bigger voice here and again going back to what i said about erd I got to give it to Venture Sword because he's fucking great on this. And, you know, he's still somewhat the dominant voice, even though there's the fourth guy is in here a bit. I just, I like to think that, you know, the guy was a fucking hell of a sport, you know, being in the band for this long. And now you got Vortex really kind of inching his way back in the band and uh, being a little bit more dominant. Is, is he feeling like he's being pushed out a little bit? I don't know, but it doesn't feel to me like he feels that way on this record. He had some Maybe. hearing damage. Something happened, an accident that damaged his hearing. That's why he had to leave the band. Right, and and it was, but and and it was it was it was an amicable split, and he had reasons. But I I still say that you know I I I think that he was a great sport here, and and uh, you know to 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 let the music do what it was going to do, and not have to say, look, I have to be the guy here. I have to, you know, now we've got all these other singers. 
I'm not the guy anymore. You know, no. I mean, uh, everybody's the guy here for me. And uh, I think, you know, to me, like I, I love Inner Sorg, and I think that I don't know that that's the way he felt here, but I like to think that he did. You know, and uh, and and to me, it gives me so much respect for him. Uh, and uh, you know, this being his last record, uh, I'm really sad to see him go. You know, because as I said, um, you know, they had some some bumpy moments, but I think that he did great stuff with his band. Oh sure. And, uh, and uh, I think, uh, you know, yeah, I'm just I'm sad sad to see that his last one. But this is number three for me, guys. I love 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 this album. Right on. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. It's my number three too. Um, it was my number one for a long time. Well, since it came out. Uh, so I have a bit of a personal story with this. Um, my best friend passed away of brain cancer in August before this album released. Um, this album released in January of 2016 and she passed away in August, 2015, <laughs> a pre-order went up for this album and she actually pre-ordered it for my birthday. Cause my birthday is in July. Aww. So it came in the mail after she had passed. Oh, Jesus. Um, and it was kind of like one of those like surprises, like I'm like from, from the beyond. So there's that emotional attachment to it. Yeah. But mm. aside from that, it is what I have been waiting for Borknagar to finally do to finally get together and finally just do what they've been trying to do for the last several albums and just like go all out. And even with all the vocalists, I think that this was their magnum opus. Like this is what they needed to do for the band to really solidify who they were going to be and what their identity was going to be going forward. And it does stink that Venture Sorg had to leave after this. Um, because I do think that if he was on these, you know, the next two albums following, they would still be just as good with him on there. Um, but I feel like this is that album that Halloween recently did with all their vocalists. Like, and I, I wondered when this came out, if this was going to be their last album, like, it, it, are they, are they done? Are they going to hang it up? And if they had been, it would have been totally fine. I think it would have, they would have gone out in a blaze of glory if they had. Um, and I thought that I just put while, that but... song in my head. <laughs> <laughs> the Bon Jovi song. Shut down and blaze of glory. Anyway. <laughs> but this is a master this is a masterful album. Um I, I really it's hard to say anything bad about it. And these next, you know, three albums we talk about are so were so hard for me to rank because there's so many things about them that I absolutely love. And I agree with Jimmy that this is the best music that they've put out in these recent years. So yeah, I have set number three. Uh, but again, it could easily be my number one tomorrow if I go back and listen to everything again. It, it varies, so that's not not really saying. <laughs> uh, um, I will say, "Cold Runs the River." I love that song on this album. That's a song that I will repeat over and over again. So I don't, yeah, I don't do that very often mm -hmm. with albums. I tend to listen to beginning to end and not repeat songs. But this is what that's one of those songs that I will repeat a lot. So yeah, I love this album. It's so good. I and I yeah. Although I wish the album cover, I like it, but I wish it would be a wintry scene. Like it has always bothered me that it's this like 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 uh like alien type of scenescape. It never really matched what I was hoping to get from this the theme of this album, but that's just a nitpicky thing. All right. Yeah. When chaos calls to you, that one. Oh, man. Yeah. The, yeah, the, yeah. the, the Vinter Sword chorus in that. And, you know, and, and you made a good point. This is like the Halloween self titled for me as well. Yeah. But not yeah. as good. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ellen, hmm. winter thrice. All right. Sure. Um, I agree. You know, they're kind of taking what they did on Erd and building with that and, and doing it quite well. Once again, everybody's contributing. They've got, you know, all these vocalists, <laughs> but it's working. Yeah. It doesn't feel like anybody's stepping on one another's toes or anything like that. Yeah. The compositions are built really good. It's got atmosphere back into it. Um, yeah, I've got one criticism of the album, and I'll preface it by saying is I'm not real familiar with this album. This is one I missed when it came out, so I don't have much history with it. Um, 
but you know, getting used to it in recent weeks, it does feel like it's a very busy album. Um, that and, and again, I don't feel that you know anybody's stepping on anyone's toes or anything, but it does feel like they're now trying to pack a lot of stuff uh, into some of these songs to a point where this is one of those albums that I probably will rank higher with more exposure to it. But it, it feels like it's a little dense to pick some of this apart, um, being you know, relatively new to the album. Uh, I like this style. I like what they're doing. I give it you know a very solid B kind of grade. It, it ended up getting ranked number seven for me. And some of that's just the albums have got higher than it. I know them better. I've had more, you know, experience and, you know, I've digested them more. And, and this one, you know, there's a, a, there's a little bit of a learning curve on this album to get through, you know, all these different parts and arrangements that they're putting together. So good album, but it has a lot of potential. I see why, you know, Jimmy and Melanie have it, you know, ranked higher. I really went back and forth on like maybe flip-flopping this one and Erd. So, you know, even as recently as yesterday, I was like, you know, this one could be number five. Maybe Erd's down at number seven. But for some reason, you know, Erd, you know, just stuck with me a bit better. I, you know, was able to wrap my brain around that one faster. Winter Thrice has been a little, a uh, little trickier for me just because of, yeah, so many moving parts uh, to listen to. They're good parts, but it's been a, a kind of a lot to juggle. So I'm going to say it's a good album, but I can only give it a seven at this time, or I can only rank it seventh at this particular time. But uh, interested to hear what Marty has to say about Winter Thrice. Well, I own this on CD as well. I, I like you, Alan, I, I own it, but I've only spun it a few times. So spinning it this week was cool to refamiliarize. I think it's a well-composed album. Um, of note, it's Jen's... Raiden's last album with the band, as is with Vintersorg. Um, I'm going to read a bunch of shit here because I, I wrote it. And, and when I write stuff, I typically want to read it. I don't know. I'm stupid that way. Uh, Bork Nagar remains on track, but Erd is a massive album to follow up. Uh, Winter Thrice feels a bit subdued in its shadow, but still solid record. Um, as these musicians age, their uniqueness and sound remains intact. But the union of Norwegian black metal, prog, and organic atmospheres and chord progressions feels like dad rock. Uh, solid album, but the mid-paced nature of it gives a lethargic crawl. Um, I really enjoy the passionate, clean singing on here. They All, all the people involved are doing a great job. Um, Winter Thrice, Garm is actually in key. <laughs> he sings in key on this album it's like he figured it out over the years um cold runs the river is great a rodent is a great song the album ends on a downtrodden or safe vibe with uh noctilucent and terminus it's kind of a one two um the one two punch of kind of a it feels a bit at this point those two songs could have been gone for me and it had been a better better album but they ended on kind of a subdued note which you know we like i typically like a going out in a blaze of glory <laughs> um they didn't do it on here but it's still a good record again it's one of those there's a lot going on on here and um yep all doing a great job <laughs> good job guys it's dad rock i get to say good job good job to the the norwegian dad rock and that's not a not necessarily a slam. It's just it's how this the band is starting to feel like that. They're, they've hit that age of maturity where it's starting to feel like that to me. But anyway, uh, that was my number seven. I'm with Alan on this one, and um, three years later we get to True North. Jimmy. All right. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can kind of, I see that. Another good point uh, that you brought up is that we should uh, recognize that uh, the exit of Jens Ryland. He was a pretty important part of the band. I mean, he's been in the band in long and time. out for a long time. Yeah, and he was kind of always in the background, but uh, you know, he had the shimmering Norwegian locks, and uh, you know, come on, can't can't uh, have enough of that in your in your uh, Bon Jovigar. <laughs> 
<laughs> Another dad rock band. So there you go. See? See how the connections all come together? Everybody thinks I'm an idiot, but I, I can weave a web. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny you like talk about dad rock because it's like, I guess it's, I don't know if I would like call it dad rock, but like in a, in a way, I think like that's what I really dig about later Borknagar is that like they're, they're kind of at a point now where they're just, again, I, I go back to like where we were talking about like, you know, they've always had progressive elements, but on the surface for me, it's not progressive in the way that say like enslaved is progressive, right? Because like enslaved mm -hmm. really goes down to Prague, sure. you know, wheelhouse, like they're they more really traditional like, Prague. Yeah. Influence. Like they really go out there with, with the Prague stuff. Whereas Bortnagar, like they flirt with Prague, but I feel like they always come back. And what I want out of Bortnagar is, is like those, those songs, you know, those, those memorable hooks and melodies. And, and I think that that's what they've really perfected. From, I mean, they were always really good at this. I mean, they've always had those in place throughout the career. I mean, even going back to the archaic chorus, you know, with, with Vortex, I think there was a lot of that really um, just, you know, the, those melodies, those uh, the, the, the vocals that stick in your head. And I think that that's really going to continue, uh, you know, the trend and what, you know, they're going to continue to do what works for them. And they've done, you know, they, they're doing what works very well the last couple of albums. And I mean, I don't know. I still to this day don't know what the fuck is in the water at this point for them and why they weren't writing as good shit as they are doing right now with True North. And at this point, I mean, again, as, 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 as sad as I am to see Venture Sword go, I think that this is the, the ultimate Bork Nagar lineup with Vortex and Lars Nedland at the helm you know i mean this is this is a great uh way to go forward and uh true north is uh just another slab of just bork nagar greatness yeah. uh, every fucking song on this album uh i mean i'm always like worried that the first half and really kind of in a lot of ways the first half still is the strongest but the second half is is strong as well i mean it's it's not quite on the level of the first half, but I mean, there's just so much good stuff. I mean, we're, we're, we're back on the Bork Nagar template as usual, you know, coming out with thunderous, which is the big epic, you know, all over the place track, great melodies. Uh, but then we get with up North, man. Now up North, that is a song that man, I don't know. This is just vortex brilliance. You know, I don't know if he wrote this song. Uh, it's a look, it's kind of a long song too, you know, it could be like the radio track, but fucking Vortex on that song is just, I mean, this song just oozes him, you know, every, his every being is in this song. Um, this album also marks uh, the first time I finally get to see the band live. Uh, they went on the Devastation of the Nation tour uh, a couple of years ago, two or three years ago. They were originally supposed to do it right before COVID hit and then uh, it got canceled. They ended up renewing the tour. It was, uh, it was Bortnagar and Rod and Christ, uh, sort of a, a dual headline package. And I uh, got to finally see the band. Uh, it was so cool, man. I mean, it was sort of like, it was, it was a bummer in a way because like they weren't, you know, Rod and Christ was the headliner and Bortnagar, uh, they were uh, right before Rod and Christ and they just had like maybe 45 minutes to play. And it was just like, even 45 minutes was too short for me. Like it was so much shit that I wanted to hear them play live and uh, they still kill it, but they did uh, up North and uh, Vortex up there with the Rickenbacker playing bass and did the song flawlessly. I mean, just unbelievable. There was a moment when uh, they were done playing and Rod and Christ was playing. I get very weird. You know, I, I don't really like to approach uh, musicians these days. Like I just, I just kind of, I don't know, it kind of makes me uncomfortable and I feel like a, a moron unless I have something really profound to say or whatever. But Oystein was standing there by the, uh, the mixing table, just by himself watching Ron and Christ. And I just had to walk up to, I just walked up to him and shook his hand and say, Hey man, I've been a fan for 25 years. Thank you for finally coming to play for us, you know? Uh, and he was really cool. It was great. Um, but anyway, uh, my fanboy. uh, experience aside uh great record man uh, a lot of great lars moments on here too uh lights the fourth track uh and it's funny uh another thing with bork nagar is they often use lyrical uh you know 
song titles and lyrics later or album titles and songs later like they they interweave like all these uh these themes and you know so the third track the fire that burns i mean they say the fire that burns a lot in certain songs now if you remember back in empiricism there's the song the stellar dome they always refer to the stellar dome even i think there's a song on here they repeat like song 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 names become album names i don't know if that's yeah, yeah. like universal yeah. and i mean it happens yeah 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 they they do that a lot you know so but um anyway lights lights is a great uh Nedlin uh piece i mean i love his vocals um uh, mm -hmm. and he's he's there's a lot of him on this too on uh wildfather's heart and mount rapture man i mean that's god that chorus when they're when they're singing together man it's fucking like just i mean just a goose flash man you know uh but yeah i mean i could go on and on about this one uh, i mean i i like it almost as much as uh uh winter thrice but um Man, it's it's. I mean, it's right there, and great work. I think they're doing the best work at this point, really. And uh, this is number four for me. Right on. It's a great record, man. So good. Okay, Melanie. Yeah, this album is so good. Um, I will say the one nitpicky thing is that it's a little bit more of like a friendly commercial sounding album that would probably welcome newer fans. Uh, and that was my initial thought when I first heard my first reaction was, ah, oh, man, they kind of went commercial something here. Like they kind of sound like something that's going to be on Sirius XM liquid metal all the time. <laughs> uh, but then when I finally gave it a chance and really listened to it, probably like two or three days after it came out, it just, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like this album did, the goosebumps to me every single thing about it was just pure perfection it was definitely one of those albums that i don't i didn't think it would be able to top <laughs> um and i was like okay so i thought winter thrice was gonna be that was it and then they released this album and i liked it way better than winter thrice and i was blown away by it uh some of my like up north obviously is their song that everybody knows from this album and i think ken is out of the chat now but there is a demo of that out there <laughs> it's on this <laughs> limited edition digipack um as well as wild father's heart there's an instrumental demo so if they ever uh release a demo that that would be what it was but obviously it wouldn't be a 90s demo but still they do have demo songs out there um yeah no i love this album i have it at number two it was really hard <laughs> to rank this album with their newest album um and i think since their newest album came out so recently that's what's kind of making this a little bit hard for me to rank because i've just been listening to it so much since it came out um but this album to me a lot of people i've seen say it's front loaded i don't think that at all obviously i think it starts out thunderous you know like it's very epic and it really it brings you in um, but the whole entire album is flawless in my opinion and this is where i feel like they're finally doing what they've been wanting to do they just they got their creative writing together they finally are putting everything that they've been piecemealing together over the last 30 years and they're just putting it here and they're just they're just doing what they want to do and you can tell they had fun writing the album and that you know they were trying to just you know be who they want to be so yeah this is my number two so I think you guys know what my number one is now, uh, but easily could be my number one. Again, I I've gone back and forth all week about this. All right. Ellen. All right. Yeah. Melanie makes a really good point about this album. One of the first things you notice about it is that it does have a more simplified sound. It, it's, you know, a lot more accessible and digestible. You know, some of the reviews I've read indicated this was an album where a lot of people kind of came back to the band and they felt like that was because, yeah, there was an accessibility uh, to this one where folks could be like, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Haven't checked on this band, but I like this all of a sudden. Um, yeah, and some people liked that. Some people didn't like that they drifted in that direction on this album. For me, I think it was a positive. I agree with Melanie on that. Um, as I mentioned when we discussed uh, Winter Thrice, while that's a good album for me, it feels a little busy. And I can kind of say the same thing about Erd. I don't mind that they have you know all the vocalists and stuff 
together, but it, it just doesn't mean there's a lot going on in those albums. And this album doesn't have that problem. And it's not, again, problem is maybe overstating it, but here they're able to open things up. You're back to one vocalist and it is the vocalist. Nothing against Venture Sorg. Again, I like him as a vocalist, but Vortex is the guy. I am team Vortex all the way when it comes to Bortnegar. So having him back front and center, that's a plus. But not only is he back front and center, he is doing amazing work, which is impressive this deep into his career. A lot of vocalists over time actually, you know, kind of, uh, you know, they lose a step or maybe more than a step. Vortex sounds as good as he ever has during this phase of the band, which is quite amazing and just it reaffirms that, yes, I am absolutely Team Vortex here. Uh, yeah, and I again, the fact that they're not just revisiting the you know, Erd and Winter Thrice template here, that they did allow the music to go and do something different. I appreciate that, even if it's not... You know, maybe a real technical or complex or you know high-minded lofty direction just the fact that they did not allow themselves to get stuck in a rut and do the same thing a third time over i think if they had done that it would start to feel a bit tired to me but this doesn't this feels very fresh it's got good sound I like the production and such but yeah the fact that they're doing you know, a different little songwriting approach giving themselves a lot more room to breathe in the compositions. It just works really well. And it works well when they're doing, you know, you know, sort of, you know, faster, more up-tempo songs like Thunderous. It works better on the slower stuff too. Um, and yeah, I agree with Melanie. There are some actually, you know, very good songs later in this album. It closes on an interesting one with voices where all the attention's on the vocals for this one. Um, it's different for them, but it's really compelling it really gets your attention this album doesn't just you know kind of fade out with a couple more sammy songs it's like whoa what are they doing on this one you know whether you like it don't like it or uh, you're going to have a reaction to it because it stands out as something unique they're still trying different things but they're not going really far out there trying to incorporate crazy things they're, they're doing new things, but they're things that work well for them. Things they can do to keep mixing it up and hold your interest. And so, yeah, I, the album works on all these channels for me. I ranked it third, and at first that felt kind of high, but the more I thought about it, the more I've listened to it. I, like, I, I really like this album. It's I like everything they did. The approach is great. Um so, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with this, you know, in the third rank. This is a very much a strong B-plus kind of album uh, for me. You're, you're getting, you're pushing towards that 9 out of 10 kind of uh, ranking at this point. So, yeah, Up North um, works for me. Marty, how does Up North work for you? Well, I, I also own this album. It came to me here in the last couple of years, and I haven't spun it a lot, so this um i didn't spend as much time i listened to it this week once so my i don't know if i got all the finer details that you guys all pick out of it i'm spending a little bit more time with it than i have but um true north vocals split between vortex and um lars nedlin of course um new guitar player jostine thomason new guitarist um for me the dad rock vibes persist on this album but that's not necessarily a bad thing um, at this point, Borknagar's sound is their gift and curse. Very little surprises at this point in their career. Still a great band. It just, at times, I listen to this album, you know, I listened to this album after a lot of Borknagar this week, okay? It feels like it's coasting at this point. I think it's still good. It just feels like they're, they got their sound, they got their, their core singers all ironed out. It just feels like they're coasting to me. Um, Thunderous, great energy and inspired song structure on that one. Uh, the riffs under the blasting are full of life and dynamics. It's a great song. Um, the Fire That Burns, great grim vocals on that one. Uh, the album ends on the melancholic note with voices. It's an odd place in the track listing, but I like the song and how it leaves me feeling introspective and a bit sad, which, again, kind of flips my 
my paradigm a bit. I, I like ending a song on a strong, energetic note. They ended on a sad note here, and it works. It's a good. It's a good ending. It's a good album. Um, it ends up number eight on my list. Probably would have been higher if I was a little bit if I familiarized myself with. It. I listened to it once this week, so that's and not, no, I, Alan, I I didn't cheat. I listened to everything, every note on every album this time. So no cheating. Um, but that leads us to. Well, this is essentially a five-year gap, and this is what you got, I guess you consider uh, Borknagar's pandemic album. That would be Fall, came out in 2024, just weeks ago, as a matter of fact. And uh, Jimmy, what did you think of Fall? I think I'm still digesting it, but I think it's pretty much more of the same, uh, you know, treading on the same... Uh, you know, the same trajectory as the last three records. I think they are still on the up and up. Yeah. Um, I think that they're still writing the best music of their career at this point. And, um, you know, really at the end, I mean, I've talked a lot about what I love about Bork Nagar, but really at the end of the day, you know, it's for me, it's, it's the melody. It's, it's the, I'm a very, melodic guy that's i mean that's what i look for in music i mean i like a yeah. lot of you know angry and ugly dissonant music as well but the stuff that i really love the most is the melodic stuff you know and then if you can hook me with a good melody uh i'm in and it, it doesn't matter if it's pale or swift joking but or you know um you gonna put them in timeout or should i can't hear you jimmy yeah oh wait joking <laughs> I thought uh, I thought Alan was going to be Team Jimmy again for a second there. But, uh, <laughs> come on, yeah. No, anyway, uh, for real. It, it, yeah, I mean, I, I'm. I still can't believe that they can still just write. I mean, at some point, the the well of melodies has to sort of drown out, right? I mean, like, how can you still create such compelling uh, melodies? You know, from and and to me, that's a that's a it's a major testament to to a band uh, that has has been thirty years plus at this point and been creating amazing music and uh, comes out with uh, yeah, this is brand new and I'm still kind of at a point where this was really hard for me to rank, but I I, I feel like it's just as strong as anything they've done uh, the last few records and it's a little bit more of the same. I mean, I don't feel like they've really gone off the path very much. I mean, maybe towards the end of the record, it gets a little bit more varied and uh, we see it, we, we get another Garm appearance, which is really cool. But uh, I, I, I would even go as far as to say is like the, the track moon, which is probably my favorite song on here. Um, man, there is actually uh, a little bit of interesting things going on there in terms of like the, uh, you know, like the, the seventies rock solo, there and then they go into like a very progressive passage uh which to me like actually felt like prog rock in a way but in a good way you know like it but still very melodic but um yeah it just uh said to me that like it was like okay you didn't just contrive this it just like you wrote it the way it was and it just made sense you know and that's why you know that's what all of us look for is we don't want music that's just like okay, we're going to do this and here it is. And it's really not as good as you meant it to be. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, you know, I, I don't identify as a dolphin, but uh, that's, you know, maybe somebody will, I don't know, but uh, yeah, uh, man, I don't know. I mean, like it's, you know, Nordic Anthem. Mel, no, I mean, uh, we talked about this. In the intro, I fucking love that song, and it gives me goosebumps, and it's another brilliant uh, anthemic Borknagar tune. And I love anthems, you know, and it's appropriately titled. I love those big, just, you know, this is like uh, arena rock Borknagar in a way, but it's, I love it. It's great. Uh, Summits is the, uh, the, you know, the big epic opening track, as they usually do. And uh, it just goes on and on. And it, this actually ends quite different than the last record with Voices with Northward, which is kind of a really big and kind of intense track. You know, it goes all over the place, too. And uh, this is going to be hard for me to rank. I put it up at seven. 
just because I, I mean, the, the ones before it, it was just so hard to put above. I mean, this may go way above that, but it's a, another fine, fine album uh, for the Bortnagar catalog and will certainly rank high up in my, uh, in my year in list for this year. And now, uh, man, they're just, uh, they're, they're killing it. You know, they're, they're, you know, I mean, like as a, as a longtime fan of the band, you know, when uh, the, the origin era, you know, 2010s, I thought the band was going to just, the fire would burn out forever. And uh, this uh, shows that the fire is clearly quite, quite bright, you know, so amazing. Great stuff. Right on. Melanie. Yeah. So I felt weird saying this was going to be my number one because it just came out. Like, it feels like there's barely any time to digest the album. But to that, I say that is to an average listener. For somebody who, I probably have listened to this every single day since it's come out. And even more than once. <laughs> um, yeah. I love I mean, defining I to... albums like that. Something you just yeah. can't stop listening to. That, that's that's rare. Has... It's rare and it's great, you know? Yeah. So this is the Nordic Anthem album. That song... I think really is a strong Norwegian song. You get that atmosphere. And I feel like for this album compared to true North, this is the one that you have to listen to and, and, and just understand it's a journey, something you have to listen to beginning to end. Uh, and it doesn't make much sense to pick an, a song out and just listen to that one song from the album. Um, and when I first heard this album, I didn't, I, I really said like, Oh, this is a great album. Summit is probably one of the greatest album openers I've heard in a very long time. It gets its longer song. The harsher black metal vocals seem to be a little bit they're more back than they had been in True North. And I really like that, as well as the more progger elements that they added into this. They they shortened the length of this album. Uh, True North was a very long album. I mean, it was 60 minutes. So they did they they shortened a little bit. Um, so, and to me, that makes it a quicker listen. So when it's when this album's over, again, I replay it because i don't want it to end um and for that reason i like this is just what i've been obsessed with but i could honestly say true north might be my favorite borknagar album next week when i start to go back and listen back and forth but for now it is this because i'm living in the moment in like the excitement of it being mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. and it's just new music um it, everything about this album is essentially what i like in regards to that prog rock style of music um i really have struggled with cleaner vocals in metal music but when it's done really well and when you have these style of vocals that are just so good like they are phenomenal singers yeah like very talented and it is a very well produced album the mixes are really well like it's just a really greatly produced like sometimes that can kill it for me especially when I'm listening to bands like Cannibal Corpse most of my day. And I will you say, know? too, I used to be the same damn way, but give it 10 years. A little more yeah. maturity. You get burned no, out I mean, on certain things. You, you start yep. Your paradigm starts to shift. It, it changes. Yeah. And for somebody who, I like Genesis is my, probably my favorite band. I'm obsessed with Genesis. I like yeah. the Peter Gabriel area and I love the Phil Collins era. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's any bad albums. Some are better than others. And for that, I, with Borknagar, they're kind of a similar path for me. Not every single album sounds the same. There's definitely similarities across it. There's a lot of experimentation that they do. They, they go back and forth between black metal and folk metal. And Genesis did that a lot with their music as well. So there's a lot of similarities that I kind of put together with these bands. And Fall was one of these albums that made me feel like if they continued on and just, just made prog rock, I would be happy with it. Like if they, if they decided to maybe ditch the black metal scream harsh vocals, I would probably be okay with it because they do it really well. But at the same time, not everybody's going to think that. I, I hope they don't do that. I do like the harsh vocals. I think it adds a layer that is really good. It's metal music, and that's what I love about it. Um, but yeah, this album really just it. I was not expecting to like it as much as I did. I remember I waited till it came out. I didn't hear. I heard the single summits, and that was it. And then when I got, I got the album the day it re released, and 
I put it on and I had not been listening to music like this at all. Like it was only death metal for, until I got this album. And I was like, holy shit, that I that's it. It's over. The year's over. I'm not going to like anything else besides this <laughs> album. <laughs> oh, um, it's still early. Give it some I time. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. And there's been other albums that have come out since that I that I am now saying that as well. Uh, but I, all around, I think it's a great album. I think it ends really well. You're right. True North, it ends sad. I didn't think about that until you said that. Um, but just, I'm I'm talking too much. I love this album a lot. So yeah, right now, it, it's my number one. It feels weird to say that I am not a person that will just say immediately a new album is my favorite album. I definitely really try to take my time with things and not jump to that. But it, it's too hard for me to not say it. Yes, even We Can't Dance. Listen, you guys need to know, Phil Collins is like my favorite musician like like i absolutely adore him so i love all the 80s genesis albums that he did he's a badass drummer too you watch like oh, some of that so early good. genesis stuff him live yeah. he's raging on the drum kit. his son is his son is too his son yeah. toured with genesis and he's very good too dad's sitting on a chair and trying to get through a set and his kids in behind him yeah. crushing yeah you know, playing his stuff that yeah. he played when he was a kid anyway um uh, all right, number one for Melanie. Alan, where does uh, Fall land for you? I agree with a lot of what's already been said. It's a very good album. Um, it's an incredible performance from Vortex, even by his standard. I mean, he just sounds fantastic here. It's amazing how well it's he's an anomaly. holding up. Yeah, I, uh, it's again, I, I like all his stuff. And even here, it's just like, whoa, he's he's nailing it even by his very lofty standard. Uh, the album, while it's, you know, has some similarities to True North, it doesn't feel like it's quite as accessible as that one was. You know, it feels like it's not as busy or as, you know, full as, you know, Erd and Winter Thrice. So I think maybe they found a happy medium between those two endpoints with this one in terms of, you know, complexity and composition. Uh, it sounds great. Um, I love the cover art. We've, you know, kind of poked at the Very cool art. cover art a couple of times. This one, uh, it's a neat image, but I love the color scheme that they've got on it. With Visually, that, you know, it looks like what Bork Nagar sounds like. Yeah, it really does. Yeah. It's got, you know, that, uh, yeah, you know, cold, pale blue, watery, you know, water, you know, thing going on with that. Yeah, very much gets the winter thing, but then you have that odd orangey pink skyline that gives it that slightly, you know, weird, more, you know, cosmic kind of touch. So, yeah, fantastic cover art, great songs on it. Um, yeah, you know, Nordic Anthem, you know, there's, has the video and. It is an odd song for them. I do like the song. I think it's fine. But it is an odd song for Borknagar because this is a band that, you know, has always, like we've talked about before, song titles become lyrics and lyrics become song titles. And it's all this stellar dome and cosmic stuff. Um, you know, we always do our Halloween drinking game, but. Um, you want to really get hammered. Do a Bork Borknagar drinking game where you have to take a shot every time they mention a word having to do with like, you know, stellar cosmos or something like that. Um, th there's a lot of repetition in their lyrical themes. So for them to come out and just do this kind of, you know, hold your lighters or your cell phones up in the air kind of, you know, metal anthem, it, it does feel a little out of place. I think they did well on it. I, I like the song. I'd still give it a thumbs up, but the first time I heard him, just like, that's a weird thing for Bork Nagar to do of all bands. Uh, I would not have pegged them for wanting to build that kind of somewhat cliched metal anthem, especially this deep in their career. Uh, it, it feels like the kind of song you do when you're like, you know, 21 years old and crushing beer cans behind the Seven Eleven and, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, man, we're going to be rocking forever. Nordic Anthem. Not, not, not once, you know, you're, you know, sort of starting to eye that social security check. <laughs> um, but yeah, still really good album beyond that. Uh, yeah, that's uh, the only album song that really has that vibe to it. Others that folks have named lights is very cool. Summits is very cool. So where did I need to rank this one? Very solid B plus for me. I haven't gotten to spend a ton of time with it, not nearly as much as Melanie has. Initially, I was ranking this third, 
Um, I moved it down to fourth, though. Third felt a little bit high. Um, I, I'm one of those, I'm always really uh, sensitive is the wrong word, but it, I, I really am aware of that pool of the recent effect where that, you know, there's something new in the catalog. It's the bright, shiny new thing. We get very excited about it. And it's awesome, you know, that Melanie's gotten so attached to it. But but I'm always, you know, very conscientious of like, I really shouldn't rank this too high because it is so new and I don't know where it's going to be, you yeah, know, six months from now. It might get attention for another month or two and I might forget about it by September. I don't honestly know. So, and, you know, that said, I was like, I got to eh, reel it in just a little bit, but I still ranked it fourth. So, I mean, it still got ranked really high in their catalog because um, I'm very much, uh, you know, on Team Jimmy here. This band is doing some of their best work, and they're doing it here, you know, after, you know, several decades, you know, of a career. It's not just that they kind of turned the ship around and started doing decent albums again it's not just that they you know turn they got out of that awkward middle phase that a lot of bands go through and they found a lane and they're going to like stay very safely in that lane just kind of make the album they know will go down okay with everybody that's not what they've done you know the these last four albums you know we had you know two albums that featured multiple vocalists you know and were very you know uh, you know had a lot of you know busy things going on and then we had an album that was a lot more accessible and streamlined and you know uh, had a sad ending now we've got an album that's in between and maybe has a little more black and vocal and a little more prog uh, just you know again just a little more uh noticeable and ends on a bigger you know more epic kind of song so this is a band that's not going to stay in a way uh, and I can appreciate that a lot because way too many bands with this kind of veteran status just stick a little too close to their guns. At the same time, this is not a band that has drifted way far apart from their core sound. They're not like an Iron Maiden who just kind of, you know, now does these long, aimless, boring mm -hmm. albums that, boring. That, that, that really don't pay any homage at all to where they started. Um, Borknagar, you listen to this, like, yep, that's still Borknagar. You have no trouble recognizing it's them. But, you know, they're still moving around and trying different things. And like Jimmy said, too, the fact that they just keep coming up with so many good melodies, uh, it, it seems effortless for them that they can keep doing it for this long. Even the awkward face we talked about, nobody said those albums were awful. It's just that they didn't really click with us a whole lot, but yeah. nobody was like saying, you know, F minus zero cancel this band. It's like, eh, you know, <laughs> it's like maybe a C minus. It's not one I'm going to play very much, mm. but it, it doesn't, you know, stink. It's not, you know, dog turds or anything. Mm. So yeah, it, it's a band that is not just still going, but they are going very strong, uh, uh, much stronger than many of their peers who have, you know, lasted the distance with them. So yeah, number four for now, we'll see what it does with time. I'm going to be real interested to see how this does like in my end of year rankings, middle of the year rankings, when it's had more time to, you know, kind of sit with me and settle in more. But yeah, great album. Very happy with it. Sorry for talking for a while. Marty, oh. let's hand the mic to you. Um, I mean, what a surprise for this album for me. Um a lot of life and uh, moments of aggression on this album. The song Summits. It's a lead-off track and utterly slays with blast beats and urgent riff and melody lines. Uh, Seaman and Lars complement each other well vocally. Full and organic production. Lush atmosphere. And <laughs> the song Nordic Anthem. I mean, that this is the one song that bugged me on the, the album. It, I wrote down, is this a song from a Disney animation soundtrack? <laughs> now, maybe this one could be about a, a baby troll who is separated from his mother. He's out wandering in the woods. He looks up at the northern lights. He's like, Mommy, can you hear me? And then the, the Nordic anthem comes in behind him. And, you know. and Mar Marty, it, it, was a, it was a nice try, but I got to say, let it go. <laughs> let, let it go. 
yep. or, or maybe, or maybe. Time I hear the song now. <laughs> no, I, you, I'm not letting you kill this for me. Don't maybe it's it's just a bunch of Vikings on a ship, and they're going through a foggy on river. a Disney ship. <laughs> Going go. through the, it's a small world fl- uh, uh, ride in. at the fucking, <laughs> at the, oh my God. Okay, my wife took me on that. What if a band of Vikings on their way to raise, you know, some, you know, foreign village find a lost baby troll <laughs> and decide to like adopt it into the tribe and raise it as one of their own. So the troll thinks he's just, he's a, a Viking. Yeah. Viking. That's and a great later, idea. Of course, you know, it comes out that you know he's actually a troll, and then he has to wander out of the north to go find his real father, where he has to, you know, like you know, walk you know through the you know, uh, you know a, a tunnel to get into New York City, where his dad works at a you know writing pressing company in uh, New York City. Oh wait, this is the plot of Elf. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, they can look up, he, he'd be on the Viking ship, look up at the, at the, the Aurora Borealis. Mommy, I'm fighting to find you. <laughs> just, you know, just an idea, Disney. Call us. You know, we're, we're here. We're in, a, we're, in a, we're in a group here. We're trying to, you know, do some work for you, try to do some good things. Maybe this, we can hook this up. From the fellow who, the, the, this from the, this from the one, the apologist for Twilight Force and uh, <laughs> laser shooting dinosaurs. <laughs> I think yep. I can speak for me and Mel that you have not killed this for us yet. So, no. all right. Oh, you will think about it every time now. You're you'll see the. You're not gonna do it. You'll, you'll think not about gonna. it now. A little baby no. troll walking through the woods, lost and crying. No, yep. no, no. A magically He's animated right. snowman rolls along beside him. He has a. Be- he befriends a chipmunk, and the chipmunk <laughs> follows him. The little birds come down and dress him with, uh, you know, uh pine needle boughs and it'll be beautiful beautiful anyway i I just can't believe you don't like this song but you listen to bands like twilight force (laughs) that's intentionally cheesy and i love it anyway we're not going to talk about that right now um summits is a great song um moon is powerful and full of emotion unraveling very different track with atypical shifts in the flow and riff work northward epic and triumphant ending to a great album this is a really good album, and I put this at number six. It's right in the middle. Obviously, it's too soon to tell. I need to buy it. I need to uh, buy it and spend some time with it. I was quite, I mean, obviously, this is at the end of my listening cycle at the end of the week. So I've had a full belly, as we all have, of Borknagar, and um, I, I was really surprised. So What are in those White say- Claws? 5% of love. <laughs> <laughs> I will say one thing that just pisses me off. This is a limited edition digipack, and it was like ten dollars more than the regular jewel case that was sold out. So this does it have a Metallica everywhere. cover on it? <laughs> it doesn't have anything extra on it. Why is it? Why? Why? Because why does Century, Century Media, Media fucking suck? Like they that? do suck. They're terrible. Yeah. That's, like the vinyl is probably 50 some bucks in their web shop. I actually just looked it up. It's 29.98 plus like $10 shipping. So yeah, yeah but I, I don't more. like Jimmy, you have this too, right? It says, yeah, oh, I kept the home sticker. Yeah, limited CD on digi mm-hmm. pack. Why is, why is this limited? Why? Cause it's probably a digi pack. They probably have a yeah. jewel case or edition of it too. Actually, I would have preferred the jewel case because I mean, yeah, there's they good. just say the shit's limited, and it's because they're like, well, it's limited because it's metal, and metal is limited anyway, right? So it's limited to the first different. million copies or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, they 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 they've shot the bed a long time ago. Unfortunately, you know, at least at least it's easy, somewhat easy to get the record, but. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now, yeah. before we had to go through their damn website, and it was awful. I've been mm. screwed twice by Century Media. Well, yep. I'll never buy from them again. I, I never got my know. shit. And I, I don't know who to get. I forgot. I lost all my tracking bullshit. And... Do you remember? It used to be CM Distro. Remember when it was that? Ugh. And it was just such a terrible website to buy. It's never been great. Back in the day, I remember I got a oh, Grave yeah. You Will Never See shirt. And it took months, months and months and months. Yep. And they, it was just terrible. Anyway. Lots of good bands on their label, absolutely terrible as a distro. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's always been true. But uh, well, we've reached the end for now. But uh, 
we'll have to revisit this in a few years when they've got another couple albums out and see how those are doing. But yeah, it, it's a band that really does seem to be going strong. We, we all have noticed that while we've disagreed on a lot of albums individually, we kind of see some, you know, very similar trends overall. And we definitely all agree that this band is doing some great stuff here in just the past couple of years. They're, they they got say, a yeah. second peak, which is quite amazing. It's not something you see a lot of bands do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's very rare that I have a band where I like their newer albums more than their older albums. It is oh, yeah. a rare thing for very sure. Very mm -hmm. rare. Um, except for Brodequin. <laughs> <That's, laughs> but they have three other albums out. So there's Yeah, that's, a, that's very, a very different kind of yeah. catalog. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but I mean, yeah. So I've been thinking about that all week. It was interesting to see, like, we all agreed, like, on certain ones, and we all, like, disagreed on certain It was like we all found, like, kind of interesting parallels and middle grounds. And all based on our tastes. Yeah. 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 We, in particular, cool. you know, I kept mm -hmm. track of all the rankings. We all agree on what's at the bottom of the stack. Um, but yeah, it, it's the top and the middle, you know, individually are kind of jumbled up. Was, they were often like, two people that would have it pretty high and two people in the meet in the middle. So, but yeah, once you get to like, you know, nine, 10, 11, 12, we all kind of had those ranked very similarly overall. Yeah. So yeah, a, a pretty diverse set of rankings. Melanie, Jimmy, thank you so much for joining us and uh, helping with this. We had, you know, differing opinions, which is, yeah, gives people some different perspectives on it. Since a lot of folks have been saying this is a band they either aren't that familiar with or, didn't keep up with at times you know this will hopefully give viewers a chance to figure out which albums maybe they want to check out often you'll identify with like hey i always agree with melanie's tastes and that'll give them a direction or some people may be like yeah jimmy knows this stuff really well i want to follow what he says those two guys on top of the screen they don't know what the fuck they're doing i'm going to ignore everything the one guy gets there. drunk and sings disney songs about <laughs> trolls and <laughs> Talks about Halloween like an idiot. I don't care. Um, but, you know, Melanie, you're right. And, you know, choosing this band was a good one because you're not a ton mm -hmm. of people talking about Bork Nagar. And, I mean, hell, we had about 50 people tonight, which is a great turnout. But, yeah, you know, typically it just seems like a band this caliber, there'd be more. You know, it's, it's weird. And it's cool that it's going to be here and it's going to be archived and people can check out what we have to say about it. So we'll see. Indeed. But, we have to thank both of you as again, if you are in the chat and you're not familiar with Melanie loves death metal or future ruins, please go click on the links in the description, go over to their channels and subscribe. Both of these find earthlings are doing great work and you'll see Melanie a bit more. Obviously she's doing some reviews for heavy metallurgy. So she just did Brodequin and, um, yep. We'll get both of these fine people back on again very soon. Yeah, does anybody Absolutely. have anything to add before we bail? Yeah, I was just going to say this was a great idea, a uh, great band, one of my favorites. And uh, it was cool because, like, you know, Mel kind of reached out. We were talking about quick testings and stuff. So it's it's been cool to finally be on with you, Mel. I've, I've watched yeah, it for a while. For sure. So, uh, you know, it's uh, cool to, you know, it's the whole point of this whole community and stuff is just like making those connections and shit. So this was a lot of fun and thanks for for the idea I, i've i've really enjoyed like just diving back through the discography again in the last couple me too of weeks. me too mm -hmm. it's been Same fun here yeah like i said at the beginning this is a band you know that you know i, I kind of come and go with so it's been uh really nice getting to reconnect with them and revisit a lot of these albums that i haven't heard in a while and you know a couple that i really didn't know at all so very and they're fun really topic. a band that i think it's easy to lump them in with enslave but they really have their own sound they sound, yeah. Oh, yeah. you could put on any one of their records and say, oh, this sounds like Borknagar. I mean, you wouldn't mm -hmm. have to even think about it too much. You know, it's just uh, a extreme talent and um, very unique band. So, yep. Very good. Um, cheers, everyone in the chat. Um, Monday, we will be back for show notes. Uh, TJ will be reviewing My Dying Bride's new album. Um, that'll be up Monday. Wednesday, we are covering Sanctuary's Refuge Denied in the Album Club. Oh. oh. Yeah. And next Friday, I don't think we have a guest hmm. yet. Nope, but uh, we've got some things in the works. So we will see everybody next Friday for something fun for sure. Right on. Have, everybody have a great weekend and uh, be safe out there. We will see you next week. Cheers. Cheers, guys.